I think we're on. Is he recording? I see you live on. I'll tell you when. Okay. Yeah, it says live. Do we want to hold the meet the minutes to the end or do we want to get them out of the way? Right away? All right, we're all set. Thank you. Thank you. Lisa, you're on. <laughs> okay, this is the Town of Amaranac Zoning Board of Appeals meeting on September 23rd, 2020. Um, in accordance with Governor Cuomo's Executive Order 202.1 as extended, this meeting is being held remotely via video conferencing. It's being broadcast on LMC TV, um, on channels, what channels? BIOS 35 and Optimum 76. Okay, and also on lmctv.org. Um, and the public hearings scheduled for tonight are being held in accordance with Governor Cuomo's Executive Order 202.15 as extended. And um, that's it. If anybody has any questions in the audience, they can email public QC at town of town of Mamaronic, ny.org. That's public QC at town of Mamaronic, ny.org. Well, um, can we start? We Please. did. Yes. Are we postponing the minutes to the end? Okay. Well, why don't we? Because why do people have to wait around on the uh... application number one? Oh. Um, we should no note that application two for Blossom Terrace is adjourned for the evening. There will be no meeting. Application number one, case number 3185, Mark Teich, public hearing. Application of Mark Teich requesting a variance to replace the central air conditioning unit on the premises located at 11 West Drive and known on the tax assessment map as block 107, lot 112. Make a motion open the public hearing. Second. Second. Is the applicant here? Hello. <laughs> Mark, you're muted. Mark, you have to hit unmute. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, good evening. You want good to... evening. How are you guys? Okay. I good. have no raspberries. <laughs> <laughs> oh, heard all that. <laughs> um, yes, thank you. You want to present your case to us? What, what you're looking to do? And why certainly so uh, i bought 11 west drive in 2002. Um, when i bought the house it had an existing old air conditioner before 2000 okay and the air conditioner i don't know exactly how long it was there but it was before the 2000 law okay i did not know that it had to be legalized when i purchased the house the house was sold uh, in 2019 okay and when the, per the new purchaser bought the house, they asked me to have it legalized, okay? And there was one set of um, the compressor, uh, sorry, the air handler, the compressor was outside and it's too close to the property line. However, the property line faces leather stocking trail. There's no, you know, facing, it was existing, you know, pre-existing, you know, condition type of a thing. So um, I prepared the paperwork and I'm hoping for a variance. I don't think that anybody has complained about this ever. Um, and it, it's, you know, basically to, to legalize on the house that I've sold. I was going to tell the board, we, we did go through all the records. We couldn't find anything to help, help them out, to, you know, see if we could get this, uh, find it in our records, which would have been great. So oh, we, we have, and we have never had a complaint on this set of records. So the question I have is there, as you just stated, there was a, a compressor there at one point in time. Correct. There, there, there was a compressor. I probably have a. Was it on a pad? The... Was it on a concrete pad, or was it? Yes. It's on, it's, it's on a pad. It's it's on the same pad that it was on that it's on now. I don't think the pad was even replaced. So you so from your your presentation that it was actually placed. It was replacement of a air conditioner that was there prior to year two, two thousand. That right? Yes, that's correct. That's correct. And before, to, it, it was, Richard, was it in the year 2000, the year that we had that horrible uh, case? September 1st, 2001. 
So there wouldn't have to be a uh, record of air conditioner prior to that, would there? But we would need, we, we would need, before somebody replaces it, we need proof that it was there prior to that date. Otherwise, everybody could say, oh yeah, my 2020 air compressor has been there. You know, I replaced it last week. So I can't uh, show you any proof. So we do need to know either, a lot of times we'll get service records from pe people, give us a old, you know, some people keep their service records, we'll have a service record. We'll have something that they can give us to show that it's been in existence. Or we sometimes will have an old survey that the surveyor actually put it on there and it's before the date. So the fact that there was a, um, a pad there, an old concrete pad, doesn't give any any indication that there wasn't something on the previous. Yes, we wouldn't know the date from the pad, so. But how would the, 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 the town know that if it wasn't required prior to 2000? I just said how. We would either, A, the applicant would need to supply us with something that proves it was there. Well, the pad isn't good. I mean, you can't look at a little pad that's spoiling and, you know. I'm just trying to figure out, uh, there were many, many compressors that were put in prior to 2000. Did, did they ever need to be filed? There was no law to say, it was, the, it was that case in front of us that- No, said, that done, this is how we've done it in the past, Arthur. We've had it where if the, if the applicant can't show us that, we've done a few of these, I believe, that the, you know, they haven't come up either with like we said, service records or, you know, something that's substantiated being there, even sometimes, even if it's a picture of their child <laughs> at the age of three and they're 30 now, you know, sitting next to it, you know, something that we could substantiate some sort of. Right. An old title search, maybe, or. An old title search. Old that might have, you know, Mark, was the, uh, the, the air handler that the compressor was attached to, was that changed? Was that removed? Yes. No, when you when we replaced the the compressor, uh, which was several years ago, I think it was 2015, uh, it, they were all they also replaced the, the air handler at the same time. It, it was a packet, you know, that was very very old. Duct system was the same, wasn't changed. The duct system is the same. Nothing has changed with the duct system. That's correct. I think that um, this house uh, was actually owned by Ernie Anastas. Um, and I, I believe that he is the one that put in the air conditioning system, um, or it could have been Dr. Stasa, who was the, the, the owner after. Um, I'm, I'm not sure which. That, that, that air conditioning system had been there for some time. And there are no records of um, nothing on anything that, there was, that was not changed with any names on it or nothing. Um, I, I, I would say that, that, no, I didn't. I certainly had no idea that I, I needed to save something like that. We tried looking at, um, not at his house, but in the past I have gone to houses and looked at the um, ductwork. And it's, I haven't found any dates on any ductwork that I've looked at so far. I mean, sometimes you'll get lucky with, with materials that have a date painted on it or printed on it somewhere. I mean, like I said, I haven't looked at his house, but you know, in the past we have looked and have not found any. I mean, the year 2000, um, there were many homes that had air conditioning put in prior to that. Many, I mean, air conditioning, I remember when I lived on Valley Road, I put a central air conditioning in on the existing hot, uh, hot air system. And it was, that was 19, I mean, well, that's 1974. It's probably still there. <laughs> right, but it doesn't matter because if you can't show it, then we have to give them a variance. Right. Correct. Oh, at this time, that's the position. Yes. But I would think that, the, well, anyway, okay. I can't believe a house of that quality in that, in that area didn't have air conditioning throughout it since the air conditioning was made. I just did enough renovations that they were there. Anyway, we're, we're at this point. Any question? Any other questions for the board members? Yeah, I would just uh, ask two questions. Um, Based on looking at the survey, nowhere on that side of the house could you possibly locate this without requiring a variance. Also, from a practical standpoint, that in the reasonable proximity in the rear yard, there's actually an existing flagstone patio. 
that's there. So you would have to move this substantially to the other side of the house in order to not require a variance or be in the middle of your um, patio, correct? Yes. Uh, so th this particular unit is, the reason it's located there, it's for the master bedroom, which is directly above. Uh, the air handler goes above the bathroom, which is on the, uh, the second floor. Um, so there's a, a pipe that goes down, follows a gutter that's right there. Um, it would be a really big major operation. I, I mean, I mean, I guess anything is possible, right? You could, you could, you could do anything, but uh, it, it, we'd have to run it from the opposite end of the house. Yes. Right. So one would assume there would be a substantial or at least a significant expense related to a relocation, correct? Uh, the answer is yes, and that's, that's correct. And you would need a variance for that as well? No, you would not need a variance to move it to the other side or to the rear, but it would be a significant distance away from the area for access. So, uh, and you really don't want to run a, you know, supply, you don't want to run the supply lines that far usually anyway. It's not right. great for the compressors. Right. And so, I would also, uh, and just to, what you had stated, um, no one is ever going to live on that side of the house. This is actually the access for the Leatherstocking Trail that ends up crossing over Weaver Street um, and then cuts through. And the other neighbor adjacent is, we had a big pie-shaped lot that sits in between here that can't be developed. Um, I'm not sure about the second part. Do you want to repeat that one again? I believe we have a lot that's in between that's an easement. That's county land, right? This is Westchester County land that, that's adjacent. There, there could be no structure that would be built adjacent or at least within some reasonable proximity to this. So we don't have to worry about the issue of noise for any neighbor because it's a substantial distance. I mean, the property that, um, the property line that abuts. The, the side where that AC is, yeah, is I mean, Westchester County. That's the stocking land. trail, correct? Right. Isn't that parkland now? Yes. So I don't think any it's, house. I would there. also okay. note the applicant had put into the application uh, the specifications for the unit. Um, and if I'm reading it correctly, um, I think we're looking at a uh, 74 DBA rating on this. So without being right on top of this, I don't think it could possibly affect anyone. You wouldn't even hear this from the road. I have no other questions. Are there any questions from the uh, audience? Richie, anyone commenting? Nothing, nothing on the emails, and I don't see anybody in the audience raising a hand. And Francine, can you please confirm this was duly noticed? Yes, it was. So at this point, should I, I make a motion to close the public hearing? Second. Did you open it? I yeah. did, yes. Thank yeah. you. Okay. <laughs> so it's right on my computer here. Open the meetings. <laughs> do you want me to make the motion? Oh, well, who's closed? Who's closed? Who second? First. I did. Who's making the motion? I can, I can make it. the motion. Okay. Should I do it? Or Just trying to the uh, case number here. Um, oh. Get the right case number. This is 11 West Drive. So, case 3185, uh, Mark Telch, Tip Teich, Teich. Um, 11 West Drive, Larchmont, New York. Uh, the applicant is seeking a variance for a replacement of an existing air conditioning uh, compressor uh, on a side yard at four feet where 10 feet is required pursuant to section 240 37B, subsection 2A. Um, in, in addition, it also increases the extent of the building is non-conforming because this building actually does already sit within the setbacks. Um, in reviewing the application, the board uh, took into account to balance the benefit of the applicant with the detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the community. In determining that, it looked at whether the benefit can be achieved by other means feasible to the applicant. Um, although there is a possibility of another feasible uh, solution to this, it would be significant in both expense and may actually cause a detriment to the uh, efficiency of the unit because the air conditioning compressor would have to be located significantly uh, far away from the air handler. 
uh, which could degrade its performance and may actually cause an increase in the number of BTUs that it has to produce and which would increase the DBA level of the unit as well. Whether an undesirable change of the neighborhood or character to the nearby properties, this is a replacement of a existing air conditioning unit. So that air conditioning unit, according to the applicant, had existed prior to the year 2000. Uh, according to the uh, building inspector, they're unaware of any complaints that were ever lodged because of that air conditioning unit. Um, it is adjacent to county land, so it actually does not abut another structure. So it's unlikely that anyone could hear this, even from the road that's out there, because the unit has a low DBA rating. Whether the request is substantial, the board would find the request is not substantial since this is a replacement of an existing unit. Uh, whether the request will have any adverse physical environmental effects. Once again, this is a replacement of a unit. The only adverse effect could potentially be noise, but being a low DBA unit, it should not have any impact. Whether the alleged difficulty is self-created, the difficulty is clearly self-created as the applicant wishes to have air conditioning and replace a, a unit that was not working. Um, but it is non-determinative in this matter. Respectfully submitted. Second it. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Call Aye. It. Hold it. You want to call the roll? Or? Yeah. Arthur? Yes. Irene? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Robin? Yes. And who seconded that? I think I, I did. It was Irene. That's who I heard. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I was I looking defer, at the same I time. defer to Irene. <laughs> <laughs> she had her hand up and said it at the same time. Uh, okay, we're finished. Okay. Yep. Thank you. You have your zoning variants. We'll let you know when the permit's ready. Thank you all. I appreciate it very much. Bye. Good night. Night. Okay, as I said, application number two is adjourned tonight. Application yes. number three. Case number 3171, Andre Bogarts and George Stone. Public hearing, application of Andre Bogarts and George Stone requesting a variance for a six foot fence on the premise located at 80 Howell Avenue and known on the tax assessment map as block 405, lot 390. Make a motion to open the public hearing. Are they here? Yep. Somebody say second. Second. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, Francine, can you just confirm it was duly noticed? The sign was updated? Yes, it was. OK. So I have a question, and then I wrote past it again. Do we actually have somebody joining with us. Uh, is Andrew on? I'm on. I'm on. I'm present. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> well, they're just not used to me not talking. <laughs> Thank you. So I have a basic question, and that is, that is, this, is this a six foot high fence itself, is that correct? And it sits on the property line a little bit in on a on a retaining wall at parts. Is, is that still a six foot high fence or is it the or is it the definition of the height from the grade adjacent to the retaining? It'd be the grade. So if that's retaining wall not a natural structure, you'd want to add that height into it. Otherwise you have to step back to four feet. And in this instance, oh, if, it's, it, if it is a natural structure, then it's okay. That's how I would interpret it. Okay. That's so okay with me. If you're a building, building inspector, you make the interpretation. Yeah. All right, I'm sorry. Mr. Bogart, do you want to... It, it, this, is a, this is a reoccurring. You, you, you once adjourned, correct? Chair, if I, if I could, Andrew Spatz, I, I'm representing yes. um, Andre Bogarts and George Stone this evening. Um, pleasure to see you guys. Thank God my kids are home because they are the ones who actually got me on Zoom. Otherwise, I would probably be sitting at the town center this evening. Um, indeed, the family did uh, retain me to assist them. I don't know, Francine, is Martha McCarty on the phone on the Zoom as well, or is she... I can, she not? I can promote her. I just didn't know if she was not. She's yeah, she, she's co-counsel, but I'm going to take the lead on this. Um, and I know that the Bogarts uh, previously appeared before. Just to take a step back, again, it is a proposed fence that is going to be six feet in height. There is an existing uh, fence there, as you may know. It's in disrepair due to age, exposure to elements, and obviously recent damage from a tropical storm this past summer. Uh, 
the fence would be similar in style to the one currently present and would remain in the same height and style. Um, it would actually absolutely complement a wooden fence that's to the rear uh, of their property along Weaver Street. Um, Francine, did the members of the board get the photographs I sent out Monday afternoon? These are the most recent photographs. I don't think they did. Okay. Are you so able to going you're going to show them. Share them, you're to show them. Uh, that may be problematic, uh, but I'll, I'll try to do my best to give illustrations. If you, if in the conclusion of the proceedings, if the board wants to see these photographs, we can we can uh, try and make that happen. Uh, now, the photographs will reflect the existing wall, uh, which shows that there's extensive foliage and screening already in place. So any type of uh, thoughts or belief that it would create a ominous or canyon-like uh, environment is certainly not the case because of the extensive amount of landscaping that's already present. And I do know that the applicant would be also willing to add additional landscaping in areas where perhaps if the ivy or the trees and shrubs were not as thick, they would obviously add that as well. Um, the, there was a previous uh, application granted to the property behind them, 129 Carlene Avenue back in May, 2017. I'll make reference to similar uh, comments that would apply to us that was made back in 2017. Two very important points that I wanna, I wanna share with the board tonight. As many of you know, um, Homics and Central now are on a hybrid schedule. So Weaver Street as is, is very, very busy. Now you actually have four and a half peak periods. You have two peak periods of traffic along Weaver Street, right in front of the property in the morning for the AM shift at Central and uh, at Homics, and then two uh, peak moments in the afternoon around noon and around three o'clock. And then you have the traditional rush hour in the evening around 5.30. So you actually have five periods now where you're gonna have a much higher uh, intensity of traffic along Weaver Street. And as I'm sure some of the members listening and participating this evening know, the village of Mamaroneck and the county will be replacing the bridge at Boston Post Road and the intersection of Mamaroneck Avenue. That's gonna be closed off. Hence, there's going to be a tremendous diversion of traffic along Fenimore and Weaver Street for traffic to go north-south along Palmer Avenue. Um, I know that that project was somewhat delayed due to COVID, but that is in the pipeline, and that is something to also to consider uh, on Weaver Street. Uh, making reference again back to uh, a previous application, which was granted to 129 Carleon. Again, uh, there was a photograph that was provided uh, Monday, which I wish you all had the opportunity to see. But we do believe that no undesirable change in character of the neighborhood would be created by this fence. Again, Andrew, it, it, Andrew one sec. Just so everybody knows, I just forwarded you his uh, Andrew's email with the photos, so I don't know if anybody's. Oh, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. If anybody's if, able if to the board, if members of the board want to take a moment, just if you have that opportunity to look at it, that would be really helpful, because it would show the extent amount extent amount of of, of um, natural landscaping and screening that's present, and it does make a tremendous difference uh, from if you're either walking or in the vicinity of Weaver. So were, were those screenings um, planted after the photographs that we have like from January? No, they, 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 those, photo, those plantings have been there. So uh, the bottom line, is, the bottom line is you'll have that screening for half the year when the leaves are on at, in blossom and at the end of the summer, August, end of August, they are the largest possible shape that, that they would be. You'll have, you'll, you'll have that from, right. Yeah, so it's 50-50, you know, when, when it comes well, some to- Some of the, I, listen, I'm not an arborist. I'm nearly, I'm hardly an arborist, but some of the um, foliage that uh, is present is actually, if you, if you look at some of the photographs that my clients originally provided to you, I'm they are, it looks like the dead of winter and they're still present. Some of them are, I guess, pine or 
I don't know. It's still green, but not much. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I have it right in front of me the photographs. Anyway, a lot of anyway, stuff on the inside face of it. We okay. don't. So, can I just can I just ask? You want to talk to the photograph? You just identify the photograph we're talking to. Sure. I'm, I'm, let me take a step back if I can. Um, when I was making references to the existing wall as of Monday, picture number one, picture number two, and picture number three would reflect the current state of what that, the screening looks like. And as I indicated, my clients would be willing to add additional landscaping and, and screening um, to address those concerns that the chair raised about, well, you know, during the winter, you may not have as much um, leave action on there. Um, where can I, excuse me, where can I add any additional if it's being put right on the property line? Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's almost impossible unless you get granted, uh, you can get that. Well, if you look at the, if you look at the photographs, if you're looking at number one, I'm not and, sure that is in the right of way. Just be careful because you're looking at the, I'm looking at the survey that was presented to us in, in November. And okay, so January, January 22nd. Was, and it's on the property line. And it's also, it's in yellow on my survey. And or maybe I put the yellow one. Yeah, and it's that, also yeah. that parcel land on the corner. That was a question about that being the town of the town's property was that yeah, we're going to get to that in a moment if i could uh because that that that's where my colleague martha mccarty that's her that's her special niche uh but um just going over the photographs again so one two and three or as is uh photograph number four does show and depict the damage and somewhat disrepair that the fence is in and uh Photograph number six. Are, are these the I photographs think, that you submitted earlier in the week? Yes, yes, sir. I don't think we have them. They just you just got them in your email. email. Photo, I got them my email. I go to my emails. You were all gone. <laughs> photograph number four doesn't show where they're. That's not fair. I'm on my computer. Hold it. Hold it a minute. Robert, I'm sorry. Were you saying I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep up with you? No, uh, photograph yeah. number four. It is, doesn't look like there's room for you to put any cover. Well, I, I think let's just go back to Arthur's point because the applicant is saying that they can provide screening, but I'm not sure that that's practical and actually can be done. Um, we have a state road here and the fence itself is the property line. He does not control any of the foliage that is on the other side of the fence. If the town were to come in uh, because of this or the state decided that they wanted to cut that back, they could do that by right. So he can't guarantee that he has an ability to screen that fence. So I, if we just want to stay on the one point of the willingness to screen, you'd have to step this fence back um, in order to do screening so that you were capable of maintaining uh, the shrubbery um, on, on your property. That's a fact. But anyway, do you want to discuss that corner, corner parcel of the town of Marinick? I will defer to uh, Ms. McCarty just in a moment, if I could, before we get to Martha. Uh, picture number six, so we refer to the point of the property right behind us has the complimentary wooden fence at six feet high. There is no uh, screening, there is no foliage, there is no landscaping, but the board did approve that back in 2017. And what we're looking at though, what's different about this application and why these two properties differ significantly is the topography. Um, the reason that we're really looking at this this closely is that we have got a large outcropping as well as a man-made retaining wall. So we're really not looking at a six foot fence. We are looking at something that's approximately 15 feet high by my measurements. And that's why we were uh, questioning this further and not necessarily applying that this was analogous to the neighbor's property. And that's demonstrated in your photos here. I mean, when you look at photo number, um, the one that shows the disrepair number four, um, How do I get that? we've got this stone and, uh, Richie, what was, what's your determination? Is that, because I, be I believe there's stone 
that is cemented on top of that rock formation. There were two different, one was a rock formation that looked like just a rock formation in one of the pictures and one looked like a stone wall to me. I, yeah. Correct. So that, that's why these two are not the same. And I, I think you really need to talk to the argument about why at that height with the additional height should this be allowed? Um, Cause I'm, I'm not, happy to. I can't, I can't really buy the argument that says, look at the neighbor who's got it because it's a very, very different situation. And I looked at it from one end all the way to the other. He has no situation like this next door. Jonathan, I'd be happy to speak about that. Um, having been at the property on Monday at about one o'clock in the afternoon, the property is absolutely beautiful. I live in the, in the community. Would I want to live in that house on Weaver Street? No way. The traffic is ridiculous. The amount of traffic, noise, lights that impacts that particular parcel, I think it would be in the interest of the homeowner to have that. It's not just a matter of reducing the amount of noise and light and pollution that's coming in towards uh, their house, but it's also a matter of, of security as well. Um, and to provide them a little bit of solitude in their beautiful backyard. They have an absolutely stunning backyard, but when you're sitting out there, there's a tremendous amount of parking, uh, I'm sorry, of uh, traffic. And, I, and, and when it, if we want to talk about aesthetics, listen, I'm all about aesthetics, but I also took a picture number five. If you look at a picture number five, on their corner is a trash bin with dog bags filled with poop filled with it. That, that you know, I'm more concerned about that than I am about you know the fence. So I, I think it's a matter of you know balancing the the desire for a resident in our community to be able to enjoy their home that they've lived in for 20 years. There's an existing um, uh, fence there now. It's not like they put this in overnight. There it was a pre-existing fence. They're looking to make repairs and to improve it to improve the visual if I may experience it from the outside. And, and we all can agree that Weaver Street is not just a sleepy street. This is a major thoroughfare. I drive that four times a day now to drop my kids off at Central and Homix to pick them up. I'm not the only one. There are a lot of people who are doing that. Um, and they, they themselves, being the homeowners, will certainly be able to share with you their experience of living there in the past, over the last 20 years, how it's changed from a street that just had two rush hour, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, to now being a, a very frequently used, utilized roadway. So I think it's a matter of if it's done tastefully, Mr. Sachs, to balance the interests of a resident of our community to make their experience better. If you're not causing any harm, you're not changing the character, you're not impacting the uh, aesthetics of the, the street. I, I can't see why the board would want to turn something like this down. Uh, I have a question. Sure, Robin. The, um, the retaining wall, is the property on the other side of the retaining wall, is it level with the top of the retaining wall or is the retaining wall kind of act like a fence and the property is lower? No, no, and Andre, you're, you're, you guys are on the phone, uh, I'm sorry, you're on the Zoom call now. It's absolutely a beautifully leveled backyard so at the top of what you're saying. So it doesn't go down. No, so when not you, at all. Wait, no, if, I would say if, actually, if you had no fence and you climbed to the top of the retaining wall, you would then step level onto the property. Correct. That's what are you saying? I mean, well, I think, yeah, I think one point to make, though, is from our yard, it's actually higher in, in the main part of our yard. So the yard actually tapers down to the fence. So I think as Stephen was there today, if you're standing in our yard, you're actually looking pretty easily over the fence because the fence, even though right now in the main part, it's four feet and it may be on part of a ledge, but in most of our yard, you can really see easily over that fence because our yard is primarily higher than the level of where that fence is, is, is resides. See, my observation when I was on the property was that we were actually providing more privacy from the inside out. From the outside in, anyone who is on Weaver Street has no ability to view into this property. I understand that having additional height creates a larger noise barrier and to some extent will help to dampen you know, some of the noise that's coming from the street. Great. I would counter that with that um, your client has moved on to a 
double yellow line, State Street. That street existed prior to him coming in. There was always traffic on that street. It may have increased, but I don't think that's the, that's the major issue. What I'm concerned about is an oppo is a very opposing structure, um, one that from top to bottom, from that sidewalk to the top of the fence, as I said, is over 15 feet high. There's a reason that this town had created um, you know, certain requirements and, and we as a board, are, we can't change those requirements, right? We can issue a variance when we see that the factors should be uh, looked at differently because the law itself didn't really take into account the issues. So I'm really trying to get at not that, because I don't believe providing more privacy for your client from the inside out, it overcomes an issue of dealing with how it affects the neighbors from the outside in. And that's what we're talking about. Is the benefit to the applicant not outweighed by any detriment to the community? Which so just, I, I just, I'm just, just leading you to, please talk to that to give me the argument so I can- but If I can, those, those are very fair, Mr. Sachs, those are very fair and reasonable requests and inquiries. And what I would suggest and present to you, and, and I'm, I'm sure on, uh, my clients, George would also like to uh, chip in, Two things. One, I think also in the in the expertise and, 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 and intellect and, and experience that you all have as members of this board, you would all we could all agree that this particular parcel is set somewhat unique in the sense of it's on a curb, it's on a bend, it's on you're right, it is a very busy road. Now, there's no doubt in the course of 20 years that this road has become a lot more frequently used and exacerbate it now because of our unique situation we are with COVID, having four, uh, five rush hour periods now that we didn't have before. Um, and I, I, I think obviously this is not a, an application that many other individuals would be able to come before your committee, uh, I should say board, Mr. Sachs, with, because I don't think that the town has many similar properties that are on a corner they're on a state county road, a double yellow line road in a situation like this. Um, and I'm not just taking this from a point of view from the inside out. I, again, during the uh, spring, summer and fall, yes, I think there's absolutely plentiful of landscaping and foliage to, to insulate this. If you were taking a look at the pictures I provided, I don't think anybody would say, oh, that's unsightly. That's that's a menacing um, angle or or, or uh, structure. During the winter, I would I would concede that yeah, we want to work with the community, our neighbors, and the board. Perhaps you have a suggestion as to what we could do to reduce if you felt that perhaps it had an ominous uh, uh, view. Well, uh, I, or, I, would, or sight. I would point to I point you to the most analogous one to this, which also is a Weaver Street situation, which is Weaver and Myrtle. Um, okay. of which this board granted a variance on the corner lot that was there under the same arguments that you had about the amount of traffic that goes through that intersection, especially impacted by the schools. And what that applicant did was did significant amount of screening, set the fence back, planted shrubs along the fence that faced onto the Weaver Street side to completely screen the fence. And we recognized the hardship that was created you know, because there is this noise and traffic and so forth um, we're just trying to balance that with what could be done here. It would seem to me there's plenty of room on this property to set this fence back two and a half feet, you know, provide a row of arborvitae or some other, you know, full uh, year round planting uh, that would, if anything, you know, beautify and would completely hide a structure that's there. There was also a case up on Weaver Street before breaks to go down Murray a white fence on the right hand side coming down that was in front of us and and that applicant not he stepped his fence as it followed the grade and he planted in front of it as you can barely see the you know, you see the fence because you're approaching it at an angle but in reality if you looked at it a bit head on you wouldn't see the fence i mean i would be i would be curious to know um as the as the attorney to our town attorney uh, pointed out to the board 
it was properly noticed. I don't know if there's anybody uh, looking to provide comments or questions. I mean, this is something, again, I, I would want, be curious to know whether or not any neighbors have any objections to it. Um, that would be obviously a point of interest. Uh, and I am concerned, I, I'm actually intrigued by what we could do in terms of, yes, it's right on the fin, I'm sorry, on the, above the stone wall now, what we could do, whether or not my clients would be willing to do so to back it up a little bit. Again, there's an existing fence now. It's been there for, uh, uh, George has been there for 20 years. Well, it's been there 20 years and at actually least. six, well, at least, well, we've been here 20, but it was there before we got here. But, you know, part of it, it already is six feet. And I guess what I'm struggling with, Mr. Sachs, is that you're, you're talking about 15 feet, but all we're asking for is two additional feet. If it's already, if you think it's 15 feet, fine. I don't think it's that high, but then it's already at 13. So is, is anybody walking by there even going to notice the difference? If it's, what is that, 12 to 15% higher? I'm not sure I understand the point. The point is that this board needs to provide the least amount of variance that can meet the needs of the applicant. And we are trying to determine what that least amount is. And we have to balance both those, those points. I'm trying to get over the point of saying that there's more of a benefit that seems to be derived from your side because of the topography of the property where it slopes up. And I stood back there. I agree, you see completely over the fence. I, I agree, I would also like to have that there. And I'm also in agreement with your argument that this has existed for 20 years and there has not been a complaint and this would be a replacement of something that's in disrepair. I'm, we're charged with a certain amount of things. I'm trying to get you to give me the ammunition so I can check off all the boxes for you and I'm trying to get over those two issues. This right. is an imposing structure. Whether it was granted, it wasn't granted previously, it must have been done, right? Because a variance didn't exist for this previously for the fence. We even know that the other fence that extends in the front is extending onto uh, town land. So clearly this, this was erected um, at some point without consent by the building department. So we're, that's Mr. why we're up against this. Mr. Mr. To the town land, may I just say one thing? With the retaining wall, I think to characterize it as imposing as an imposing wall that's 13 feet is also a, a, a mischaracterization because there is a setback. It's the retaining wall and then the wall, uh, then the fence, you can't even see it, like you say, mostly in the um, spring to fall months, but you can't even see it from the street because there is significant foliage. The foliage also, I mean, we're happy to put in additional um, evergreens. We think there would be room but we think, you know, it would be a lot of competition. You have beautiful, some of the mature trees that are on the a long weaver. And I think it would be a shame to take those down because I think when you're walking along Weaver Street and we walk our dogs there daily, um, it, it, it's, it's actually very aesthetic and it would be a shame to take that down to put less mature um, evergreen, evergreen plantings. So well, I, I don't think you can yeah. do that. I'm, I was suggesting only that you didn't control the foliage that's there because it's actually on the town property within the right of way. Mr. I, uh, uh, Sachs, if, if we can, we, we can always go back to George and Andrea. If, if I could, I would love to turn to Martha McCarty, who's on Zoom right now. I think it, it would only be fair to address the issue that uh, both you and Chair raised uh, several minutes ago. So Martha, if you could be kind enough to... Um, provide us so, some information on that on that so, uh, good driveway. evening ladies and gentlemen um i just do want to sort of go back to what we're talking about now um when people talk about screening a fence i mean to me ivy and all sorts of creepers are very easy to screen a fence whether it's great for the fence is another story but it's very easy to screen with not much property needed i would also urge the board to remember that they are the Board of Appeals. So yes, you have the law, you have to understand, you know, to enforce it. And I understand that you wanna give the minimum, but you wanna think about what would, if there is no real detriment to the community, 
what would the benefit to my clients be? So, but the question here is that there is a detriment to the community. With a I'm, I'm not so sure that, you know, that that's a corner where a lot of people are going to look and say, oh, my gosh, that fence looks terrible. Um, it's very cool. much green. There's a lot of green. We could add more green. But, I, uh, you know, I appreciate there are differing points of view. But let me talk to specifically the question of the town property. So if you're looking at the survey, which you were given, um, there's kind of a rectangular area. And my our clients have a easement over it. And when they came to us, they said, gee, you know, part of the problem was um, the board pointed out that that's the property that is owned by the town. And they had come to me because they knew I had actually um, on prior occasions negotiated um, for clients the purchase of town property. So I said, you know, we might be able to buy it outright. We may be able to um, just increase your easement over that area. But I said, um, in order to do that, we have to ascertain, does the town really own it? So I called up a local title company that I do a lot of work with and they said, oh, we'll just quick, you know, look through the records. So in fact, as far as they can tell, the records stop with two deeds, one in 1930, from 1937 and one from 1944. They also called, um, I believe the town assessor and spoke to her and she said, gee, you know, we kind of think we own it because when Weaver Street was um, widened, we probably took it through, you know, condemnation, but, you know, we're not sure. So in fact, um, my clients gave the go ahead. We're, we're in the middle of it. Um, unfortunately, I had hoped it would be done uh, by today, but it's um, a very difficult search. They're going back basically to 1913 when all the property was owned by the Howells and to see where that property has gone. So it's not clear to us that the town owns it. Um, at least it's not obvious. And the title company, you know, again, did a quick search and they can't find it. So it may belong to the town, it may not belong to the town. So um, for the time being, I think our application is ignoring that part of the rectangle. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously we would like something that would be coherent, that would go the length of the property. But there's nothing you can demonstrate, though, that your client owns it, regardless well, of... <laughs> well, I'm sure they don't own it, that, okay. that rectangle. But the question is, who does own it? If nobody owns it, or if the last deed is from 1944, there are um, things that I could recommend to my client. They could bring a, um, what's called a title action. Um, they could also, believe it or not, deed the property to themselves and after 10 years say, great, it's adverse possession, we own it. Yeah, um, although it's my understanding you can't do that against the municipality only against yes the but that's yeah, right. that if the town owns it then we're done right but there's there's no and they understand that um but it's not, again at this moment it's actually not clear that the town owns it i i think and i would have to defer to our council that i don't know how we can issue a variance um to a property that's not controlled by the applicant. But we're just well, actually, about that one rectangle. So, and, you know, and we're happy to do everything else and just leave that one rectangle alone. Obviously exactly. it comes back that the town does not own it. I'll probably be having a conversation with Ms. Hockman or Mr. Altieri or uh, Bill Maker. So you're, you're now requesting the variance 
has your application changed from what was submitted and heard by the board in February? Are you now ca carving out a portion? Martha, I think it's fair to say that if if the issue of the um, that corner little parcel is in question, then my clients, we did speak with uh, both George and Andrea uh, today, well, recently, and they would be willing to stop at that point on the survey where it shows uh, the question mark whether or not the, the town of Mamaroneck ha has ownership or or not. Is yes, uh, Ms. Ottman. My recollection from when this was last before the board in February was that board members asked you to return with with clarity in the survey as far as what you know what portion of the land was owned by the applicants. So actually neither Andrew or I were at that last hearing so um, I'm not sure that our clients communicated that with us. Obviously again we have the search in progress um, it's benchmark title agency. If you know them, they're in White Plains. They're very good. And it's a very complex search. Um, because, you, you know, it, it may behoove you instead of coming back again for an additional variance, you're able to do this. Your client's already getting benefit of the existing fence that's there. No one is yeah. asking them to remove it right now. And coming back with a complete file, you've heard our comments about perhaps the board may be more um, inclined to an approval if there was a softening of this, that there was some way perhaps that it was less imposing. Um, you know, again, I'll leave that to you to decide on how you want to treat that. Um, and maybe you just want to adjourn to come back with a complete application that addresses all your clients needs. Since uh, I think we'd prefer to restrict it to the property that we clearly own. And I would like to add that our fence is falling apart. You know, we had two trees fall on our fence in the last storm. And we tried to clear up this other issue. It's taking more time than we could expect. And so at this point, we're looking to really restrict this request to the property that we clearly own, which really is our backyard along the street. Okay. Lisa, since this would be less of a request, there should be no need to additionally notice, would you think? I agree that this that you wouldn't need to re-notice it. Um, but then the question for board members is whether they have a su sufficient information as far as what, since the proposal is now different than what was proposed back in February, that the board net members need to um, feel that they have enough information about the fence, about screening, about anything else to make the decision. But it would not need to be re-noticed. I mean, I think we can look at 46 degrees, 16 minutes, which is identified on the survey as the end point of that corner that they'd be looking at if we're talking about only starting within their property. That is at least clearly delineated on the uh, survey. Perfect. So I don't necessarily have a problem if they want to modify their application that says it starts at that portion of the property. You don't have a problem with the application or you don't have a problem with them identifying the... Um... I'm just saying with them having the application modified to only request a lesser variant starting at the corner point less of variance the line as it is fence. on the survey. Less of variance and length of fence, is that correct? Right. So I just had no I problem with the I'm not commenting on problem. the merits of the case. Would you like the applicant to address? You say that your parcels of portions of your backyard are higher and some are lower. Therefore, that means along that property line, the it the prop the height of the of the whether it's rock, natural rock or it varies in height. And you intend to put a six foot high fence. I would like to see how that fence gets installed, where the steps occur, and if it's at the 15 highest point, whether you can modify that down to, a, to, to have a lower fence at that point. So where you have the, the, the fence where it's six feet might go to four feet, then back to six feet to keep a more modest uh, line and see what that fence looks like. And I think it also, I'm not sure even the notice, Richie, we were, as we addressed earlier, was even correct because we know that a portion of this is actually man-made wall. If the request was a variance for a total of six feet, that would start from grade. This fence, on the day we issue this variance, you will not be able to put the fence on top of that wall. It would have to be, because the application is not correct. You have to take into effect the total account for the grade. Correct. So I don't think we have enough information. I, I don't have enough information from the 
street side of your property line, what that looks like. I, I don't know if it's possible to do that. I, I, that's a huge complication. I mean, we, we talked to several companies. They said it was very simple. You replace the current fence and you replace it with a six foot fence. I, you know, the land, I, I don't know. I mean, I, what I'm talking about is the middle of our yard is higher, but along the fence is relatively even. I mean, there are ups and downs. It's, you know, as we all know, it's, it's a hilly part of the town here, but I don't know. So if, how do you, uh, how do you envision this fence being put in? Oh, very simply, there's a fence there. As part of it, it's already six feet, and we continue that same size of the fence along the rest of the wall, along the rest of the property. Well, I don't have enough information here. George, I think maybe Mr. Wexler is asking, um, how is the fence affixed to the rock now? No, 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 no. Uh, what does the, the, the face of the fence look like from Weaver Street for the length of that property line. What we're addressing is you have a stockade fence right now. The stockade fence has the ability to cover and move along the contours that are there. You're gonna be putting in a fixed panel fence of which there are contours, it's going to step down. There's gonna need, it's not as straightforward as what you currently have. You're gonna have these panels that are squared out, the next one is gonna step down when it comes down. It's actually going to leave gaps. This is a different situation than the type of stockade fence you have right now. Can we put in a stockade fence then? Uh, again, we're saying your application needs to be accurate. So if we issue the variance that the building inspector will ultimately sign off to say that the variance matches what we're uh, approving. So what would, what would be, a desirable fence. Would it be a stock big fence? Would that be more desirable? I'm asking the question. I can't answer that without seeing an elevation of the, of the property from Weaver Street. What I'm thinking, and I'm sure Martha would agree with me, and again, you know, our, our clients came to us. Um, I don't think they realized when they appeared before your board back in February what the procedure was, the protocol. And that this is more complicated than just putting up a, a, a fence. So to, to their benefit, what I'm gonna suggest, I, I would not want to amend anything at this point, um, especially by the fact, a few factors. One, um, I think that we need to discuss with our clients different styles, which perhaps when we come back here may alleviate some of the concern of the visual experience from the street view. Um, I think also Martha indicated that we're on the eve of getting some more information with regards to the corner. Um, and if it does work out that it's not the town, then we may want to maintain the position of, of, um, uh, of extending that through the, the side yard. Uh, however, if it is the town, then you're right. We would end it at the 46 point. Um, so I think there's a few things that we, there's some homework that we have to take care of. Um, and I would not feel comfortable submitting this back to you, the, 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 you know, the board this evening for a, a vote uh, on the current application as is. So I, I don't know, Martha, if you want to jump in a little bit, but I, I would be, I would feel more comfortable seeking an adjournment of this, allowing us to speak to our, our clients and discuss kind of, there's a lot being said tonight and, yeah. and there's a lot of expenses that are involved in this. <laughs> given the dynamics of the property. So I, before we go forward, I think that we need to revisit some of the things that were discussed this evening. And you should work closely with the building inspector on this to make sure that the application comes in. So when the denial is done, it's done properly to address all of those issues. The, the one that concerns me the most about the current application, or I should say the current denial, is that I believe the variance is going to ask for the full height from the grade on Weaver Street not just asking for the six feet of the grade from the inside of the fence on your client's property. And I think that needs to be clear to this board so we're clear on the variance. So Mr. Sachs, if we did that, then in essence, you're saying that um, the, the application that was originally filed by our clients back in February may be defective, hence we would have to, not defective, but it's not accurate. And we you would, you would want us to refile a new application you would, uh, amend, 
We were just a man. I, I believe a man. Can correct. Okay, I just want to make sure that way. Okay, I just want to make sure. Change my denial. I'm not so sure about that. If the uh, fence at if and that wall is included in the height of defense and it's ten feet, that's a greater variance that it was up. Yeah, so it would have to be re-noticed, but you're going to go it. through the process anyway. But it, he can still it. amend the application. But I, I think I think um, you need to be on the on the, all on the same our, page. Our notices don't say a height. Right. It would not have to be under under no circumstances would it need to be re-noticed. Well, I have to tell you though, but, on the sur on the on the survey that I have written in the survey it says six foot high fence approximately 140 feet in length. Well, so Richie and that property to... line is 165.33 feet. That's got the curve to the to what the town of Marinette's property at this point in time. So there's a conflict where the line is going there. There's a conflict on the length of that fence and it says it's six feet high. So if it's on top of a wall, it's greater than 10 feet. Um, and what were you going to say? I'm sorry, what were you gonna say? Lisa? I was just, just gonna say that um, most likely this will result in a new notice of disapproval, which is what the board members get to see what is the variance, the, you know, the exact um, dimensions of the variance being requested. So you would need to re-notice it or resubmit your application, but you should work with the building inspector to make sure that the notice of disapproval, which triggers the ZBA application, is, is worded the way it should be. So either the homeowners can call me tomorrow or Monday, however you want to work it, and we can set up a time for me to come to the house so we can walk it and just make sure we get an accurate measurement and stuff. So can I just ask a question of clarification? So the, um, you are seeking to remove the fence that's currently there and replace it in its entirety, or are you just seeking to repair or uh, substitute sections of it? It was a replacement, Robin. Thank it's you for total, the clarification. Replace, yes, total yes. replacement. Yes, ma'am. That are, we wanted to replace the sections that are, that are broken, but they're pretty much all broken. And we think from an aesthetic point of view, to have a fence that's you know matches in color would be um, more desirable. Um, we're also not looking to really, because frankly, I think it would be an undue financial burden to put in the new posts, new cement, and we haven't assessed all the implications of all that. We were really looking to do a simple, you know, put in new panels, um, as opposed to moving the fence. In, for example, in front of the retaining wall, which might address some of our- Not in, not in front, just on the same post. We utilize the existing post and put in new wooden panels. Right, but your current fence is right on top of the retaining wall as opposed to- Not, not exactly. I think that is really a mischaracterization. There is so much foliage that it really isn't. It's not like looking at 12 feet of wall or 13 feet or whatever. I mean, not good enough. Um, it really, it's, you know, you have a little bit of a retaining wall, you have rocks, you have, you have pretty foliage, and then in the back you have our fence, um, which frankly also from our standpoint, you know, our dogs could just fall off the fence. There's, when neighbors have small children, they could just fall off and, and, and fall off the rock, the retaining wall, you know, we don't have a fence there. Um, but again, from Weaver, you really cannot see the fence. Um, you can see it more in the winter. That is that is true. Um, but it's not like you're looking at the Great Wall of China. It really is. <laughs> it's not that. Uh, Lisa, I have a question. Would we? Would it make sense to think about a variance? in uh, calculating the height of this fence, since it, it does appear to be set back at least a foot from the face of the wall. Um, and so <clears throat> if it were set four feet away from the face of the wall, then it would just be counted as a six foot high fence. Is there a way that we could uh, look at the variance to modify that, uh, that requirement? Oh. So that we can say, rather than counting this and writing it that we're approving a 12 foot high wall in some spots, it is, we're recognizing that it's within one foot of the face of an existing stone wall. It is still just a six foot high 
fence. Oh, great. I don't have, I don't actually have the code in front of me right now, but I believe the code says that it is, it actually counts it as part of the fence if it's not four feet back. Yeah. I don't know. How, I know what you're saying is you want to, you want to take a basically get a variance from that provision. Correct. No, actually, okay. um, actually, that is a very interesting way of looking at it, Mr. Marsh. I, I appreciate you bringing that to our attention. And that is actually an alternative if we were to seek a variance on that component of being four feet um, back. You're from... not building, like your property line isn't the face of that wall, I'm assuming. I can't really tell from this right. survey, but if you No, but that's that's... That's a good thing for us to think about, uh, Mr. Marsh. I, we, we appreciate that. That's not a bad way of, of that's something to consider. Not having to go four feet back, but meet, meet the board halfway, meet the town halfway. You know, well, I, I, it's worthwhile exploring. I, I think sure. it comes up in the definitions, though, not necessarily in the requirement. And that when it sits on the wall, you have to consider the cumulative height. But I think my client was saying is I, I don't know technically if it's on, it, it, you know, and then yeah, the stone I, on top you should, of the stone. You should, ex, you should explore it. You should yeah. see no, 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 come we, up with it. Come Andrew, with there isn't idea. enough information in the packet for us to make that decision. That, uh, Arthur, I'd share, that's why I, I'm suggesting that I think it'd be better to just kind of adjourn it. There's a lot to digest. Who knew that offense could, you know, create as many questions as it is. There are good questions. I know I can, I, we totally appreciate your concerns. We, I was on the property two days ago. I feel for my clients. Um, I think that if with enough, this collective effort, your input, our desires, I think we'll be able to meet somewhere where everybody's satisfied. The, the town's not in a position where you're doing something that's going to be harmful to the, in the community as a whole. My client's interests are covered. You know, again, this is a unique situation. Weaver Street, you've got Stop and Shop right across the street. You've got, you know, to, it's wedged between. Yeah, but you also have a lot of cars that are coming down and are going slow there, and it's visually in your eye. It really is. Oh, Chair, it's a beautiful day, though. It looks beautiful down there. You, you, down you there. drive there, you just four times a day. You're not the only one who drives there. I'm going to go down there and sit down there for five hours tomorrow. I'm going to look up there for five hours. No, and if you're stuck in traffic and it backs up when you're stuck, you're staring. If you just, if you just go it's at three o'clock, you will be strong, there for five hours. It's a very strong element on Weaver Street. No, we, we know. We, we, we hear you. We hear you. I'm not making light of it. Uh, we hear you. A lot of people put up fences so people don't look in. This is a case where people don't want to look out. And you're up high. It's a totally different approach. If we felt safe and secure, um, I, I, I would agree. Um, safe and secure from what, may I ask? Um, from all the cars. Excuse me? From all the cars, all the headlights. Um, that's what I, you know, that's... It. I didn't realize headlights shoot up. I mean, if it's not the right fence, no, sure. no, no, no. Chair, uh, with all due respect, when it, because there is that curve that's on an angle, it's going up, if, trucks in particular, I could see if you're sitting in one point of their house with the trucks that are going up Weaver to, uh, towards um, Palmer, I, I, I can see that and I could respect that. But again, you know what? You need more information. We need some time. And to answer uh, one of your questions earlier, there's actually five players on Tampa Bay from the Rangers on the I defensive did. line. So yeah. I think Mr. Half, Sachs asked half that. Of the, half the team is. The I Rangers. think you asked that before the meeting started. So there's your answer. I'll end on that note. I'll end on that note. Yes. Uh, you, just you, need, you just need, you just need to make a, to an, a, make a meeting. Yeah. If the clients or if you, somebody wants to call me either tomorrow or next week, whenever it's good for you, you know, whenever you want, we'll Thank set you. up a time to meet, come out there. Thank Certainly. You Thank you. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Okay. Oh. Are we in agreement that we're adjourning this to an up to a future meeting? Yes. Martha. How do I do that? We should just do we have to vote on that or what? Well, I'm, no, gonna, I'm gonna, gonna request this on behalf of our clients, Chair. I'm gonna ask that the matter be adjourned. I, I'm not asking for the vote uh, for any type of further consideration this evening. Um, and obviously we'll be in touch with the town to see whether or not any modifications have to be made uh, to the or what, or what has to be added to the to the application. Yes, 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 Chair. 
And okay. I know can we adjourn this to the next case, please. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Right. Take care. Thank okay. you so much. Application number four, case number 3190, Jonah and Lexi Platt. Application of Jonah and Lexi Platt requesting a variance for a garage addition with deck above on the premises located at 118 North Chatsworth Avenue and known on the tax assessment map as block 113, lot 229. Uh, I'll make a motion to open the public hearing. I don't think the applicant or some of your for the representative. Uh, Francine, can you confirm that this was duly noticed? Duly noticed. Thank you. You're welcome. I just promoted somebody, but I'm not sure if it's the right person because there's the names don't li line up. Um, all they have is a phone number, no name. Keller Eaton's fine. What's that? After t I went there today and I could not get into the backyard without taking my life in my hands. There was a container. I had to crawl, had to it, crawl around the dumpster. Yeah, there was a dumpster, but there was also the demolition debris oh. on the walkway between the house and the dumpster and beyond it. I went yeah. to the other side of the house and it was demolition debris. And I just said, I've had it. <laughs> I walked back. If there's is anybody he, in the attendees. Is the applicant here? I was gonna say, if there's anybody in attendees, can you raise your hand? Cause I don't know who, there you, okay. So I did have the right person, sorry. Bring you back. Before yes, before we bring up the applicant, though, um, Richie, was there a previous variance yes. um, granted yes. on this location, yes. or am I remembering exactly the same house somewhere else? No, no, there exactly was the there, same there was. Let me give you a copy. I'm going You know, I mean, we see so many houses, but you know, it was exactly this scenario that I swear looking at, but I, I think it was another house. I don't remember. Hillary, we, we had this house. October 2000. What was this house? October 2019, yeah. second floor addition, deck, side, uh, addition, deck, side, setback, increase nonconformity. Right. So what did we approve in that one? Second floor addition and a deck. But the, I'm saying, are we dealing with the same exact i guess what i'm getting at is um it looks like pretty much your your the deck was off the back and that's what's getting built below and above that deck is being changed looks like. right the check is being changed to a garage that's there but what i was unclear about is whether or not what they're asking for is effectively for the setbacks exactly the same as what the board has already granted no, I believe it's um, actually closer because before it set, it, the deck was stepped back farther. If you look at, I don't, I don't know if you have the original. No, I don't. That's why. That, that's right, so why the, the deck was set back a little farther than the house than the, than the new one is. I don't. It doesn't. I don't have a distance on the survey to it though. Yeah, I had wished that we had the overlay. You know on. CS10 that would have shown the more indication of what we previously issued. Well, we can ask, we can ask the applicant. They're okay. Here. Are they here? Yeah, I don't know. Nobody's they're... answering uh, from Hillary. They, they have to unmute. Hands. Hold on. Why are they? They're still muted. They're still muted. Yep. Yeah. Wait. Nope. Oh, we're here. They were, and now they're muted again. Can you hear me? Now yeah, we can. You can? Can't Hi. see you. Can't see you. Hit, I, you can hit video and we'll see you. Oh, I'm sorry. All right, so the second yeah, floor. There, there I am. Can you see me now? Yes, yeah. Robert. Put a little light on your face. So Jonathan, see you. <laughs> Jonathan, the second floor addition was proposed at seven feet six, and the deck was proposed at seven foot five, where 10 is. Right, and now it's being proposed at seven feet six in the new application we this, this is less of a variance than we had previously granted seven five was a deck before seven six yeah it's moved back a little bit but it's not a deck anymore now it's a garage and a deck and yeah a I, i'm just I, I just wanted to have all the facts before us that you know we had looked at this property we had previously determined that it was consistent with the area we were uh, willing to grant the variance at the 7.5 previously on the setback issue. 
And I think we should be focusing on now what the use is, um, because I did have some questions on coverage and so forth and how those numbers change. And it's very, uh, very close to the total coverage number. And I don't even understand the minuses, but let's have the applicant go through. Okay. Um, can you hear me now? I can. Yes. Okay. Uh, so the, we had had been there previously. You had reviewed the deck project at a small addition on the house, which you approved. As the house is under construction, our clients realize that the garage, which is barely nine feet wide, doesn't work to, you know, drive a car in, get kids out of a car. Um, so the decision was made to try to see if we could put a garage under the deck. Um, we have held essentially the same line as was previously approved in relationship to the side yard setback. The deck is of a similar size. Um, however, what's happening now is that we have a, a garage under the deck versus an open space. Um, and that essentially was our opinion, you know, required your approval. Um, Essentially, other than that, with a minor change to the driveway, which we've actually reduced the square footage of the driveway, I believe the application is not too dissimilar from the previous one in terms of zoning. For some reason, I cannot hear you. He's muted. Because I muted myself, I'm sorry. Um, because that's what I was struggling with. What it looks like is that there was a small bump out in the rear. It kind of rounds the rear of the driveway. I guess that was to allow for a car to be able to turn and come back at the house. So you're reducing that area in order to not address coverage. Because I, I don't recall, I don't believe that we would have looked at the area under the deck as impervious surface and would have had that in the calculation previously for coverage. You're not yeah. looking at I believe that I you're, believe that we did count it as well. You're not looking at impervious, Jonathan. You're looking at lot coverage. It's, it's lot coverage. Different measurements. Well, is the garage not considered in lot coverage because it's not habitable space, or yeah, is it? The, no, it's considered lot coverage. But so was the deck. The deck deck isn't considered lot coverage only if it has to be 18 inches above grade to not 18 inches above grade. Which it was. I, that's what I'm saying. It was. Th this deck is is nine feet off of the ground. So yeah. right now underneath it is brick um, and it was pervious. And I'm just saying, I'm trying to understand whether or not in the previous calculation of lot coverage, whether or not the area that was underneath the deck was considered in coverage. Because I can't understand how you could not only have added, I'm sorry, you actually subtracted, right? Right now it's saying that lot coverage is going from in the building area up by 320 some odd feet. The driveway is going down by 130. And we end up with a net of less coverage, 2,899 compared to 2,911. I don't understand how adding a garage could somehow reduce the coverage. Who are you asking? I'm assuming you're asking the architect, correct? Yes. <clears throat> because it wouldn't have been because, included in uh, the coverage previously for the area for the garage. Because because we I, in the previous application we counted the deck as coverage as lot coverage. I actually, if you give me a minute, and I hopefully don't lose you for the hearing, I put together the package with the previously approved thinking that you might want to look at it. Yep. The previous um, approved deck, it was tiered. Does, did it have two levels to it? It had two levels, correct. Right, so maybe it was a little larger. Let's well, um, see, does everybody have CS1? Yes, I'm looking at CS1. Well, he has existing lot coverage, proposed lot coverage. And you can see the numbers are written right on it where the deck- They're not clear, Richard, they're not clear. I mean, I'm, I'm not supposed to be doing the presentation. But, um, no, but I can't hear what you're saying. I know, the, but it says the existing lot coverage was only 1026. No, no, I'm saying looking at the existing lot coverage, we have existing deck and stairs is 296 square feet. Proposed garage deck above is 280 square feet. 
and you have 92 square feet for your stairs. I mean, he has it all broken down there. Right. So the deck just good. takes up more room than the garage is going to take up because it includes stairs. That's, that's what it looks like he's showing. Right. Right. We, I mean, what we're showing here is the original deck that was on the building versus the current proposal. And if you look at those numbers, the actual new deck is a little bit smaller. We're adding separately the square footage for the staircase, which we're counting as coverage. I don't know if it should be or shouldn't be. It's an open kind of staircase. Um, and the driveway is cut back by 133 square feet. But the lot coverage calculation is based on which number? It's based on the 2911. I mean, this may be a non-issue because you may have significantly less lot coverage than what you're representing here. Because right now we're not asking for a variance when we're changing this to deal with lot coverage because it'd be 37.6, we're 35. What's a allowed? 50? 55? I'm 35. My eyes are not. 35. Why would you be a lot of coverage in a moment if they request the variance, it's only for side job variance. And if he's reducing his lot coverage, it's actually a benefit. So he's not, he just can't increase even if it's not conforming. But they request it just for side job variance, not lot coverage. Why are we even discussing it? Doesn't need it. Isn't that already? What I, we're just, holding what the I same. was saying was, I was just questioning the presentation in CS1 when I saw an addition of a garage or right. is part of a structure that actually decreased the amount of lot coverage. I was. There's a mistake, accept it, and let's just work on this. Okay. If, if what we're saying is that in the previous application, the deck was considered in the coverage calculation. Yes. Then that was really the mistake. So I nope. get it now. Okay. So are we saying there's no variance required here? There's a no, no, not for, for lot coverage. I just wanted to make sure that the presentation was accurate. Sorry, you can proceed. So Robert, That's what you're asking for is the same setback that you previously got approval for. Is that correct? Correct. We held that line in exactly the same location. Seven um, point five eight. So the addition is a garage underneath it. I get a little clearer. That has minimal use in the sense of um, light. You know, it's a garage. It isn't a habitable space. What's the question here? <laughs> The change in the plans, and that's basically well, it. Well, I, I, my assumption was that since there was something under the deck that before we didn't have. Yeah, it's a change to the plans in reality. It's a change to the plan. yeah, plans. That's right. Any other questions from the board? Because I think it's 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 a little simpler. Any questions from the audience? No hands up. And let me just check emails real quick. I, I have a question because it is a change to the plan and that there's now, but did anything actually change? That was a wall on the backside. It wasn't open, was it, was it open storage underneath the deck? Like open side walls or now, or were they closed was, walls? The original deck is just open side walls. Open side walls. Okay, so now it's closed in space. Thank you. Correct. It's a garage. Garage. Yeah, but to Stephen's point, which is fair, is you know now the neighbor is looking at a wall, not looking at a. That wasn't my point. Okay. That was. <laughs> <laughs> that was not my point. My point was that, for the for the purpose of the variance, it's almost the exact. It's the exact same. Uh, There's no difference in coverage. I, I believe you said those brick under there before. The, I think they were just covering up the old patio. What, what was underneath the deck of the surface? Originally, the, underneath the deck was another terrace that was 
just full of slimy mold because it was underneath. Yeah, but, but, it, but it was a, it was an impervious surface, right? It's brick. Right. It, it's brick right. with grass growing through the bricks. <laughs> so the only change, really, in reality, of, of, in this point, is that the the area below the deck is again no closer to the side property line. It's not a habitable space. Before it wasn't a habitable space. But it still requires a variance. That's correct. There's the change to the approved plans. And if I'm correct about the beginning of this, we are actually granting less of a variance than was previously granted at 7.5 feet. Now it's being requested at 7.6 feet. No, it's 7 feet 6 inches. 7.5 feet. That's what it says on the... Uh, is that correct? 7.6 feet or 7... 7.6, it says on the notice of disapproval. You can read this. Deck above the side yard. What's 7.6? I'm sorry. Our, our, our drawing does say 7.6. And the so notice of disapprovals match. They both, um, in 2019 and this one, both say 7.6. Okay, so it's the same location. As, as the applicant said. Oh, well, 7.6 um, on the second floor, the deck the deck in 2019 was 7.5. 7 right. So it's a little bit, it's a fraction of an inch less. Is that right. correct? Just raising the point that it's less than we had previously <laughs> okay. granted. Noted, 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 noted. I didn't need dinner yet, so <laughs> Sounds like we don't have controversy over this. Right, so I can make no questions from the audience. No questions from the audience, nothing in chat, nothing in... Any objections from the, from the audience? <laughs> <laughs> Raise your hand. Um, any objections? No, no, no comments. Make yeah, a motion please. to close the public hearing. Second. No. second. Anyone second? Second. Okay. You want to make a motion on the case? It's um, an easy, it's I can easy. try. Good, but well, you're good at this. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, I make a motion to approve the variance uh, for a garage addition. Oh, it's file number 3190 for a garage addition with deck above and exterior stair on the premises located at 118 North Chatsworth Avenue, section one, block 13, parcel 229. Uh, the garage addition with a deck in the side yard is proposed will be 7.6 feet where 10 feet is permitted and further the addition increases the extent by which the building is non-conforming. Uh, so uh, the first question is uh, will there be an undesirable change produced in the character of the neighborhood uh, or detriment to nearby properties? Um, we note that a previous a, pre, a deck was previously approved on this um, spot by the zoning board in October of 2019, and the proposed deck and garage uh, are aligned with the location of the existing deck. It's actually a fraction of an amount smaller, uh, an, an inch, a couple of inches. Um, can the owner achieve their goals via a reasonable alternative? Um, well, the, the, uh, the current garage is too narrow to really hold a car and open the doors. Uh, there's no other route to the rear yard. I'm sorry, I don't really understand this part. I, I take that back. Um, it seems like the, um, the most reasonable alternative for them to have a garage that they can put their car in since the present one doesn't work and this is an existing space uh, where there is nothing um, and that would accommodate their car. Um, is it substantial? Uh, no, there was already a variance for the deck and the space below the deck um, and this new variance is less than that. Uh, Will it have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood? Um, the deck will be similar to the original previously approved deck and the addition of the garage under the deck will have minimal impact and make actually good use of the space underneath and provide a wall where now there's just um, 
a whole, so may in some ways be more attractive. Um, is the difficulty self-created? Yes, because they want to change the driveway and, and make a new garage for their car, um, but that is not determinative. I'm, I just want to make sure I got what you said about um, the environmental impact. And so that goes to things like runoff, air, noise, bulk, um, visual impact, things like that. So what, what was your... I would say that no objections have been raised um, on the basis of environmental impact um, in terms of... Yeah, that one, the objections one is more relevant to neighborhood character. Um, the first, the first factor. So the 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 one on environmental impact wouldn't necessarily. I guess noise could be objectionable, but it's more yes. with respect to the environment rather than to people's perceptions. What when I said objections in that respect, I was referring to the other members of the zoning board, and there was a discussion about the surface and uh, what is there now and what would be there and no issues were raised in regard to environmental detriment. Um, so in that sense, I'm making an assumption that there is no detrimental effect on the environment. Um, if anyone wants to uh, comment further on that, um, you can, but no, no issues were raised as to a detrimental effect on the environment. All right. um, certainly no runoff issues. Right. Um, and we did ask about the surface. There okay. were questions addressed as and to the surface. The bulk doesn't seem to be appreciably more than the deck that was approved last time. Correct. Um, okay. It's not creating any other shadows or um, impacts to lighter air to the neighboring properties. Correct. Okay. Thank you. Are you finished? Uh, yes, I'm finished. Is there a second? That was what I'm the other five. Did I miss something? Self created? Yeah. Self -created. No, yes, it is self created. Okay. So that I is not uh, determinative. Okay. Uh, someone like to second? I'll second that. Paul, uh, roll call. Francine. Martha? Yes. Irene? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Robin? Yes. Jonathan? Yes. Who seconded that motion? Stephen. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good right. evening. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Application number five, case number 3191, Ross and Lisa Fieldston. Application of Ross A. and Lisa J. Fieldston requesting a variance to construct a pool on the premises located at 1 Split Street Road and known on the tax assessment map as Block 305, Lot 1010. Make a motion to open the public hearing. Second. And Francine, can you confirm duly noticed? Noticed. Uh, Ross, can I have a few questions? Wanda with you? Is that, I have so many attendee named Wanda? No. No, she might just be watching. Okay. Okay. We're yeah. okay. Uh, board members, thank you very much for your time this evening. Uh, my name is Ross Fieldston. I live at One Split Tree Road in the so called Marinac Strip. We have lived in this home for four years and do not currently have a pool. The global pandemic has forced us to consider all the ways that we can make our home a safe and enjoyable environment for our three children. And to this end, we've determined that adding a pool would enhance the use and enjoyment of our home for our children and our family. I believe that a pool will be a desirable change to the property and will not detrimentally alter the character of the neighborhood or surrounding properties as nearly all of our immediate neighbors to our side yard and across the street in several directions currently have similarly sized in-ground pools. I've worked with an engineer, Elliot Senior, to explore several plans, orientations, and locations for the pool. And we've determined that based on the shape of my property and location of my house, I cannot reasonably achieve my goal of installing a relatively standard sized, approximately 20 by 40 foot rectangular in-ground pool with an automatic safety cover 
and preserve as much of my backyard as is possible, green space, for my children's play area without an area of variance. I am seeking two variances, both of which I believe to be insubstantial and non-detrimental under the circumstances. The first variance is to allow the pool coping to be located at its closest corner, seven foot, seven inches from the house where 15 feet is required. Such location of the pool relative to the house would not interfere with the ability of persons to walk around the house in an unobstructed manner. Furthermore, as can be seen on the submitted plan, the location of the pool is directly behind my garage, a non-habitable space. The location of the pool is, is, uh, <clears throat> uh, is in, a, in, a, in a location where there are no adjacent doors that could create a safety risk for a person exiting the house in the direction of the pool. The windows on the garage are five feet above the floor inside the garage and therefore not accessible to children. Those windows both have locks on them as well. The pool in this location is more than 15 feet from the closest door to the house, which is uh, off of the patio. The second variance is to allow the pool to be located 15 feet from the rear lot line where 20 feet is normally required. As can be seen on the submitted pictures, the rear lot line is well screened from my neighbor's property. Additionally, the pool would sit atop a retaining wall that separates our properties and therefore would be located on a different elevation than my neighbor's yard. A supporting letter from my neighbor, Ed Rimland, has been submitted along with this application. As to alternatives that were considered, uh, I'd be happy to, to, to talk about those with the board and, and present uh, various alternatives that uh, Elliot Sr. and I had, had drawn up. Um, but if uh, uh, briefly, I'm happy to, to talk about that now. Um, if we change the orientation of the pool, but maintain the approximate 20 by 40 foot size, we would still need at least one variance in either direction, either from the house or my neighbor's yard, and such a placement would take up nearly all of our usable backyard green space, eliminating the use of enjoyment in the yard for other purposes. If we move the pool further down the yard towards Murdoch Road, we would also encounter substantial rock in that area, potentially substantially increasing the cost of excavation. If we were to adhere to all the setbacks with the orientation parallel to the patio, the pool would need to attach to the patio and would only be approximately 13 feet wide and 34 feet long, essentially a very short lap pool. If we were to adhere to all the setbacks in the area in question, the pool in this location would be approximately 27 feet long, a non-standard size pool and substantially shorter than the standard 38 to 40 foot pool. Uh, and, and a pool of this size, I believe, um, would not be worth the considerable expense that is entailed in building any pool. Uh, I have alternative drawings that I can share with the board um, through a share screen uh, if you like, and I'm happy to answer any questions about the main plan or my property. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm looking at your, your um, post drawing that I used to see in your prepared view. I don't pick up the fence now. Is there a reason? There is a fence. If you if you look, he has a dotted line which begins with a self-closing gate starting on the corner of the. Is mechanic. that that line the one that's on the left on your left property line off the um? I don't that's know. Right. What but he the, shows I don't know it. what that's what the symbol of that. He shows the that fence patch lines that are going. That make yes. Sense. What that, is that? Yes, that's, I believe that's what he's showing is the fence. So he's showing the fence being uh, starting with the McAdam Drive and the, the, the garage. What's on the left side of McAdam Drive? What is that heavy line? Stone retaining, that's there's a, a retaining wall. wall. That's a stone retaining wall. The property actually steps down, Arthur, several feet to the neighbor. There's a no, I was there today, so I'm trying to figure out. Is the fence on top of that retaining wall? or is No, it uh, no. The fence... The fence would go along. In front of that retaining wall? 
No, it would need to go from the house, okay, on the corner yes. of the, of the so garage. Self-closing door and go where? Self-closing door, it would go, it would go down, it would go down the retaining, so over the retaining wall, but down. So it's on the left side of the retaining wall. Yes. Okay. Yes. It, yes, and then it would drop down along the neighbor's property, and we're proposing to move the retaining wall slightly. You can see the lightly shaded wall is where the retaining wall currently resides. And in order to create a safe walking space around the pool on all sides and adhere to the setbacks, we propose slightly moving that wall out. Um, and that's the darker shaded wall. I'm sorry on the drawing that you uh, submitted, it's the same uh, shade, sorry. It says stone wall 40, stone wall, stone wall, there's a dimension of 40 feet, then it's a stone wall, and then there's a stone wall, and it makes like a Y coming up the driveway. That's right. And now, okay, so that Y is, is the, as it goes to the right along the pool, is that the re new retaining wall, or is it the one that's going straight up? The one that is both left, on the left side, uh, both perpendicular and parallel to the pool. Forming the right angle on the back level. Forming the right angle. All right. So, and what's happening to the wall that's there now? That's that's the Y part of the wall, the right side of the Y. That would be eliminated um, in and uh, where the that's where the pool would go, and then there would be. All right. That's, that's the beer. Does it say that? A little confusing on my drawing. Sorry. There's a note at the top of the pool uh, that says section of wall to be removed. It's very, it's small. But Arthur, if you look at the eight and a half by 11 sheet that mimics his drawing, that might, uh, that shows the darker and the lighter uh, wall to be removed, if that's any help. The wall to be newly erected replacing the existing wall is the one at uh running parallel what if i had it <laughs> i'm looking hold guys oh there it is okay not any clear but okay but i understand what you're doing <laughs> okay so um so the question was about the, the fence, Mr. Wexler? Yes. So the fence would follow from the left side and then it would go along the entire property coming all the way to Murdoch Road and then back again to the house. And he shows that as a, uh, it looks like a tick mark. Okay, I see it. It's, it's, it's the it's, line with the circle, line, circle, line, circle, yeah, line. Circle. It starts okay. out labeled as a silt fence, but then it kind of becomes the fence. That's right. And then there's a note in the back in the uh, back right corner, midway property pool fence for New York State Town and the Marinette Building Code coming across their yard. And all the doors that go out from your house on grade will be alarmed and and so they are alarmed. Yes, they are alarmed. The the two there are two doors that go out on grade. There, see where it says stone patio, sir? There are two little dash lines that attach to the two-story frame dwelling. Yes. There, there are two doors. Both doors are alarmed. So when the door is opened up, the alarm goes off. Well, it's not a it's not a pervasive alarm, but it it. it uh, well, I thought it, that's so you're a making, kid. You're making the the pool area everything within that fence. Is that correct? Inside. The fence doesn't. The fence doesn't enclose the whole house, and it doesn't enclose the um, those doors, Arthur. So the fence. You, you come out. You're on the patio. You actually have to walk across the patio to go through a gate to get. But in. his alarm system would be modified so that anytime you open the door, the alarm, the not the alarm doesn't go off, but it rings. It can, it can notify a notification, and that counts. To the New York State. Well, that's what I meant by, that's what I meant by alarm. I didn't mean a, a, a burglar alarm. I meant an alarm that notifies. It's that it's, it's hardwired into the burglar alarm, so it can notify you when the door, any door, is open. But there's two reasons it doesn't need it. It, it. By code, it doesn't need it. 
Oh no. Okay, but it does have it. It, it does. Have, have. You would have to. It's a totally different alarm, but by the way, so it's not part of your alarm system. The alarm okay. that would be required if you needed it is a totally different alarm. You can't use the alarm system. It's got to be a different noise. It's got to be resettable. There's a lot more to it. Doesn't 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 the door? If the door is within the pool enclosure area. This pool enclosure area is where? Oh, okay. No, because he has an automatic. Uh, he has an automatic safety cover, so that eliminates the need for the alarm. Also, the automatic, so that if a pool, if the pool is active and the kid gets out of that door, the automatic safety. Well, I just want to know what happens. That's because it's the pool with kids. The automatic safety cover is not as automatic as you'd like it. It has to be done with a key. It's a manual thing, but it's considered an automatic. Well, the pool is a, is available for a little kid to crawl out and get on into the pool. Is that correct? Without I think, are, you, are you asking state code or you're just asking? I'm you, talking about state code. State right code right. is if he has an automatic safety cover, which is a cover you turn a key and it closes over the pool, you do not need the alarms on the doors. Does that make sense? It doesn't no, matter. But that's the law. Does <laughs> <laughs> the insurance company uh, sort of uh, understand we, that? We don't, we don't write them, we just enforce them. But you are proposing to put some sort of alarm in. Well, he, he has oh, an alarm. We have an alarm system that is, I'm not proposing to do an additional alarm um, of the type that was just described. We have an alarm system, um, but we are proposing the automatic safety cover, which is what my understanding. Um, how does that automatic safety cover work? With a key. With a key. Uh, so if you- if And you a little kick rolling out has the key on them to, to no. close it or what? I don't understand this. Arthur, you have to call the state for this one, Arthur. This has nothing to do, I mean, I mean, you, you could, I guess, potentially say it has something to do because you're asking for a variance from the distance to the house, I guess, but this is something, you know, that you would talk to the state. But the, the, the variance that we're at, or respectfully, the variance that we're asking for would not change the situation that you're describing. Right. No, but it's, it's, it's a valid, it it's a valid question because I, I actually to put a fence beyond your um, stone patio that would allow that a kid coming out can go to the stone patio, but not to the pool. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah, understood. I don't have any children that crawl. Um, right. Even a three-year-old that walks. All right. I, I don't have a three-year-old that walks. My Even a five-year-old that can reach the door handle and open it. I mean, come on. Yeah. All, all of my children are of uh, elementary, middle school age and can. Are, are yeah, but this pool is not being built for COVID. This pool is going to be there forever. <laughs> well, I would ask, let's, let's hope that the I two don't ask, coincide with one another. Yes. Yeah, I would ask. Also, but the, your argument in the beginning was uh, COVID. So keep this in mind, all right? Yeah, well, Arthur, I would, I would ask the question differently. And I, I just, again, Richie, if you don't have the answer to this, you don't have the answer because it's a very valid question. We're looking, there's a reason why the state says, and we say a pool should be a certain distance from the structure. There is, I the, guess, state, the state doesn't say that. They don't say what, it doesn't say well, what. It's our zone. Uh, other towns, for instance, Scarsdale requires only five feet from the structure. There's other towns that require none. I've actually in Newcastle had somebody put one almost right against, as long as you can get that foundation to hold the water pressure. Yeah, and I had New Rochelle where they made me put locks on my second story windows that I still don't understand. It, it, right. I know it's crazy, but I guess the question was, because, and it's my own ignorance here, is does anyone know why we as a town had decided on 15 feet? I, I don't understand why that's there. Okay, and like you said, there are other municipalities that don't require that distance. It, you know, and it's not like there's this trade off of the alarm or whatever, because I, I just think we should be informed and understanding if there's something we're issuing a variance for that was previously considered as some safety. I will issue, say you know. in the old green book, there was some fire um, distances. That's the old green book from New York State. 79. And, yeah, there were some there were some things and that might have had like a 15 foot and you did want to use to have like 15 feet between a house and accessory structure. It was to let the fire department go around the building, set up a set up a, um, a which we call a ladder easily. That was probably the reasons back then. Um, it's not in the code anymore. Okay, it hasn't been for years. So I, I would like to see the alternatives that you came up with because 
yep. you know, just to the to the eye, it looks like I really would like to see that. Yes, you would require a variance within the other. Sure. So I'm having trouble share. Uh, if you can tell me how to share my screen, you move your mouse around on the bottom. The yeah, I see bottom. share my screen, share screen and then is it? How do I get to one of my folders? Access. Well, online? you you just you just open it up on your screen. You might have to uh, shrink it. You have to do it first. Desktop. Okay, here we go. Right, right on the desktop. Uh, open system preference. That allowing me to do it. Jonathan. Privacy. Jonathan. Okay. I'm almost there. Yeah. Zoom will not be Number able to record there. the contents of your screen until I quit. <laughs> what were you saying, Arthur? In New Rochelle, they used to have a law when you had a pool, the fence could be no greater than 20 feet from the edge of the pool. Right, and I had I had a really obtrusive fence in the backyard, and when I went to go for the variance, which they gave me, to have the, the fence go to the outside, they made me put locks on my second story windows in order to grant the variance. So if I share You're lucky my- you got the variance, by the way. Am I sharing my desktop now? Yes, yes. yes. you are. Okay, so here's- here we go. I'll deny this. Am I still sharing? Yes. Okay. You might just want to make it full screen. Thank you. There you go. Okay. So this is alternative one. Um, this is if I adhere to all setbacks. So 20 feet from the backyard line, 15 feet from that corner, more than 15 feet from the door, and clearly more than 15 feet from the side yard um, because the house is 18 feet. Uh, here we would have a 13 foot eight. Uh, as, a, as, as a rectangle. This rectangle right here. As a rectangle. That would be a 13 foot wide pool, which is essentially like a lap pool. Um, Arthur, can I just say one thing? The, the thing most people you'll see, most people are going to rectangles now. You don't see many free form pools anymore. And that's because- For the automatic safety cover. Exactly. So we, I, won't consider, I won't consider doing without an automatic safety cover. Well, that's, that's why you'll see a lot more rectangles now. That's right. Um, so this is a 13, eight by 34. This is a, this is not a standard size. This is not a, a really usable pool. And to Mr. Wexler's point, this is much closer to the stone patio and much closer to the house. Okay. That would not require a variance. No, this would not require a variance, but this is not a, a pool that would be, in my view, worth the expense of building. Okay. Uh, it would also take up uh, a substantial part of the usable space right off of the patio. Which, which you could screws. just jump from the patio right into the pool though. <laughs> I said, yes, I suppose. Um, but it, 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 it interferes with the ability of the children to play soccer. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, number two. So this is, if we built a 20 by 40 foot uh, again, and I call that a standard size pool. I consulted with several building companies about the, the you know, what, what is considered standard. Um, obviously pools can be built to any size, um, but in terms of the automatic covers, which in and of themselves are, are a very costly add on, um, they're not typically built in custom, you know, you can have it customized, it's even more expensive, but um, 20 by 40 is a, is a relatively standard size pool. So that's, um, uh, and, and asking my neighbors as well what size pools they have. This is in the, the same range. Um, so uh, 20 by 40 here, if we located it 15 feet from the property line, 15 feet the from, house, the, from the house, uh, uh, I'm sorry, more than 15 feet from the property line, 15 feet from the house, we would be required to have a variance, which is a greater variance than I'm asking for from my neighbor. And while this is not shown, my neighbor's house is actually right here where my mouse is moving and his driveway is right over here. Whereas where I'm asking for the variance to his house is in his deep backyard. So this would actually encroach closer to his home. Um, uh, so one variance would be required to get the same size pool. And as you can see, 
this almost entirely eliminates that area off the patio, which is the main green space uh, area for uh, children to play. The next alternative that we explored was to move that very same 20 by 40 pad, uh, 20 by 40 pool, but now bring it closer to the property line. So if we make it exactly 15 feet from the property line and 20 feet from the neighbor's yard, we still need a variance from the house, which is eight and a half feet, which is substantially similar to the variance that we're seeking now. Um, in addition, this, uh, as you can see, takes up again, most of the usable play space coming off of the patio and takes us closer to the patio, um, getting closer to Mr. Wexler's previous concern. Finally, uh, alternative four, this is essentially taking the pool that we are proposing and shrinking it down to meet both the backyard, side yard, and house requirements. This pool is 20 feet wide. We could make it actually a little bit wider. That would make it further non-standard. But in keeping the 20 foot width, the most we could do is about 27 and a half feet, which is a very small pool. Um, and uh, in, in my view, the cost would, uh, would be uh, quite high for the outcome. But this is the pool that would require no variances um, whatsoever in that location. The only other question I have is, did you have any letter of support from Three Split Tree? Because, uh, you know, the Murdoch house is actually a little bit further away than is three from your especially that rear corner. Um, so uh, three split tree, um, I didn't have a letter, but I actually met with the owner yesterday, took him through all the plans on property and um, he did not express any objections. I, I can, I can Maybe ask him. You're living with the ping pong of tennis balls <laughs> from there, I guess. So it's a fair- No, that's not that. three split. The, the tennis balls are actually on the house that faces- uh, Griffin. Griffin. Three split is the house that has a pool um, that, is, that, that would be right next door. Okay. So I met with that owner yesterday actually um, to discuss the plan in detail. Uh, I don't believe he's on the call. And if you would like a letter from him, I can ask him for one. Um, but that, that home, uh, we are 15 feet. We're, we're in compliance with the uh, required side yard setback to his house. Now, looking at his property, he has an enormous front yard. I'm burdened by that. You're talking about one. Yeah, one is, it's a corner lot. It's got front yard is, I can't even imagine what the full length is. It's an enormous thing. Front yard, I mean, it goes from the upper right hand corner all the way down to the lower left. It's, yep. it's a lot of uh, place you can't build. Yes. Yeah, the way that the house was situated on the property, it left us with a very relative to the size of the property, a small -er backyard. Um, and so it made it very difficult, as you can see, the various variants that we came up for pool plans it made it very difficult to locate and not uh, totally eliminate the green space, which is very important to me with three children uh, for them to be able to also play. Right, right. No, I, I just would have noted that um, the proximity to the neighbor at three split tree by moving it several more feet in is not going to change the effect. The, the same noise and everything else is going to be generated into that backyard anywhere it was, even if it didn't require a variance. So I wouldn't have made that a major issue. The other thing that I note is that the swimming pool is being located where it's 7.7 .7 feet. That's actually a garage. It's not even the habitable space. There's no exit from there that gets that closer to the pool or you know creates a blind area. So I, I don't I don't see that as a major issue. And it looks to me like 
the benefit of having, you know, a dramatic amount of additional usable open green space uh, clearly, you know, outweighs all those other alternatives that were out there that, you know, uh, completely uh, destroys the use of the backyard. So. Uh, I, I was looking at this and kind of questioning that same uh, rationale for the 15 feet off the structure uh, question and 15 on a side line and 20 on the rear line in this situation doesn't seem to have there doesn't appear to be much difference between those two either the side neighbors or the rear right, right uh adjacent neighbor why we're we're fixated on 20 feet on the rear yard and 15 on the side yard but that uh, proximity to the house um it almost uh, would it not be is the applicant better served and is everybody better served by pushing it further away from the house and encroaching more on that rear um setback <clears throat> which if the if that's something the applicant is looking to explore get it further back into the back corner i <clears throat> I, I would be, yeah, so I would be fine with, I mean, obviously, um, if you want more. We don't, I don't know why we say 15 feet off the structure. Uh, some municipalities, as you've brought to our attention, require five, but it does look a little, if anything's jammed up, it's jammed up there. You could push it back a, a couple more feet to that rear line, which is really uh, getting closer to nobody, um, just uh, land. Whereas if the kids are playing in the pool or they were just playing in the back left corner of your property, they'd be making the same noise and impacting your neighbor the same way. That's what Yeah, look, if, it, um, and, and thank you for that comment. If, if you see, we, in, in order to adhere to this, we've actually, the, the pool itself, we made it smaller, right? So we were going for 40 feet of pool. We actually have 40 feet inclusive of the coping but the automatic cover is actually gonna take two, not one foot at the deep end. And so the pool itself, if we stay within a 40 foot footprint and we have a one foot coping on one side and two feet on the other for the automatic, we'll have a 37 foot long pool, um, which uh, is, was, you know, was smaller than, than, than ideal. Um, if I were, were able to utilize more of my backyard corner, um, as you say, um, and, and maybe have a 12 foot off the backyard line rather than 15 foot, um, I could uh, I could move that. The only reason I'm looking at, at reducing it to 12 is to get it further away from the house. No, 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 I understand that. That's what I'm saying. We already made the pool smaller. So um, if I'm not looking to make the pool any bigger, but if you're, what you're trying to do is move the pool a few feet away from the house, I would certainly be amenable to that. I don't think that it would uh, impact anybody. And if you see those photographs that I showed you, um, if you look at, there's a photograph that shows you from the lower elevation. I'm happy to share that as well. Would that involve a change in the variance application? Yes. If you want to move the pool a few feet back. This is where that retaining wall makes that turn that Mr. Wexler was asking about earlier. That, and this is where it will be squared off. You can see the substantial drop off from my property down to the level of my neighbor's property. These, these uh, evergreen trees are my trees. So that's the property line. That's his property and house behind. And so um, the pool in any scenario uh, that Mr. Marsh is referring to would be above this retaining wall. And screened by all of those trees you planted. Those and trees stay in place, right? And your new retaining wall is built stay. on your side of those trees. Yes, these absolutely stay in place. Anyway. So let me ask a question. When you say it's the requirement is 15 feet, is that to the water line or is that to the coping? To the coping. The coping. So, so what's the difference if yeah. you you're in a rear one third of your property, 
and you put a surface there that goes five feet to your property line. It's on grade. Is that still considered your coping? So the coping is only the, the, the one I foot. The coping and, and, and um, I'm asking Richard this. Yeah, I was going to ask the building inspector. <laughs> yeah, right. Richard, that coping is only that one foot piece. Is that correct? Yes. That forms the pool. Correct. You can do it. So you can, you can put your, um, your two foot deep um, cover However. anywhere to five feet to your property line. Anywhere. Well, it has to be attached directly. No, what I'm saying is, even if you push. Yes, you're you're right. If if the coping is one foot, yeah, Mr. Wexler, you're right. If the coping is one foot, and but the the mechanism requires two feet, I suppose you could call one foot a coping and one foot part of the mechanism, so to speak. Right. 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 That's correct. So so then we could retain the 38 feet inside the pool. That that would be nice. Um, yeah, that change doesn't change. That, that you're, exactly. We what we've what we've shown here is just uh, showing how we can get forty feet of coping plus pool and approximately twenty to twenty two feet, you know, like uh, uh, in width, and and try and stay on the parallel behind the garage. That was well, what Stephen was saying was, or well, move the whole forty feet further away from. That, that would be, I, I would, and, and reduce that portion in the back, which is the sort of the the jam up, the jam up of all the those backyards of all these houses. <laughs> right. Well, if you were to grant me twelve feet rather than fifteen feet, I can increase that to ten seven, and that would be um, that would give us a request. Yes. Continue. Oh. Could he do an oral amendment of his application or would he have to come back with a whole new thing? No, he could do an oral amendment. You're not losing anything. Do you, you want to do it? You're gaining, you're gaining space between the corner of the pool and your house, that's for sure. Do you want to do a, a voice vote on whether somebody would vote differently if it were the 12 versus the 15 so he knows whether he should amend his application? Thank you. All right, Stephen. I'm taking it. <laughs> what are you doing? No, well, I'm just a little confused if we are actually creating more of a variance, why the neighbors should not be notified of that. Well, we're reducing one variance and increasing the other. I, I agree. I wonder too. It, I would be upset if I looked at this and said, oh, I looked at it and I was okay with 15 feet, but I'm not good with 12 feet. And you changed it on me and I didn't have a, I didn't get notice of that. When are you, when are you getting started with this pool? Uh, well, I, I, I'm told that if you don't begin promptly, I have an email from one of the builders uh, that I've been speaking to. Um, and I will just, I can read it to you because to show you what mania there is right now building pools, P please be advised that scheduling for 2021 springtime pool construction is booked at this time. Scheduling now is including mid to late season 2021 construction. So let me ask you a question. Okay. And no scheduling can be done without a permit. That was what they told me. I mean, you're not changing the size of his work. <laughs> He's putting a hole in the ground. That's the size of the pool. <laughs> He shifted two bloody feet. He's not going to say, all right, all right, he's now pushed down another year back. Tell uh, me. And by the way, 2022, we should have no more um, COVID, hopefully. Well, I'm, 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 that was one builder. I'm confident that I'm going to find somebody who can. But you're not starting now, I mean, next month. Well, I would like to start as soon as possible. I think that the, the issue is that I once I know what the size and shape and location of the pool is, then I can formally move to um, engaging a contractor plans, get on a schedule. There's a quite well, a- not, That's not what, you're not changing the size. Not changing the size. You're not stop changing the location in essence. No, uh, it, the proposal- the pool, by, pool equipment's will be in the same location. Yes. So it's just a matter of it's two feet off or two feet, not less, but further from that. Three feet pushed back. 
three feet. Right. right? So if you got a, an oral and official vote from us tonight, you could move forward with your contractor because it's really, um, well, I guess it's, we would have to be telling him that we are basically going to grant his variance because we don't want him to come back a month from now and turn him down. Assuming Why? the neighbor doesn't complain. Wait if the neighbor complains. Look, look at his site. Can you call your neighbor? I can absolutely call my neighbor. Do you want me to? You know, since when are we so concerned about Hold on a moment. Okay. It's not something above grade. This is something on grade. It's something that noise, one foot or two feet is not going to make any difference to the impact on anybody. Any of the alternatives were worse than the alternative presented to us. Well, maybe not worse for the neighbor, though. Well, well tell me how the impact. Well, respectfully, I think moving any of those pools closer to the neighbor, you can see in that picture where the neighbor's house is, is moving the pool closer to his property line and closer to the neighbor. It's home. This is the furthest from the neighbor. I'm, I'm Which neighbor? House, right. From his house, exactly. And the, not the one on the left, because you're moving it laterally. But the one on the left, I'm not seeking a variance for. The one on the left is within the code. And the one in the back, where's the, did you show his house on here? No, but you can see his house. If you look oh, at I the- I like to see the, I like to see the um, tax map. <laughs> I'll pull up the photograph again, just. I have the photograph. Okay. But I'm looking for the tax map, but if it isn't here, well, that's a little deficient. Is it, do we know if it's in the packet? Yeah, I have a tax it's map with a yellow highlighted corner lot. Well, I don't seem to find it. Shouldn't we ask Lisa to weigh in on whether this would require renotification before we? Uh, it doesn't it? require. It does not require renotification because, okay. as Richard mentioned, the um, the notices themselves don't list dimensions. Okay. But because Mr. Fieldson said he sat down with his neighbors and went through the plan specifically, it sounds like right. some board members think that it might be important to update the neighbors on. Yes. On yes. I mean, I have that issue and I also have the issue and not to really fight this about providing the least amount of variances is necessary. And I wish I had more clarity on a rationale for distance from the house. That's what I was getting at earlier to say, does it help with safety? It's further away. We could actually say maybe it could be five feet like other towns do, or maybe we don't care. I, I didn't have a rationale for this to say we should move it further away from the house. And the current position requires well, the least amount of variance, it seems, that would be necessary to grant in this situation. But when our rationale is 15 feet and other communities have five or even none, that suggests that our community prefers, um, you know, a larger distance from the house. Correct, but there's it's a balance. It's a balance here, right? Um, we're not going to get to 15. I try to understand a 7.7 .7 was not adequate, right? Versus the uh, granting a larger variance on the rear setback. Look, it's technical. I, I, I don't have a real feeling one way or the other. If the applicant would benefit significantly more by a greater variance that's there that doesn't create more of a detriment, I'm more than willing to go with that argument as well. So. <laughs> We raised it, or yeah. Steve raised it anyway. <laughs> I think uh, Stephen raised it, and yes. I followed through. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the three houses, the applicant's house in the middle of the elbow, the other house is parallel to, to Murdoch with a big backyard, even though it's facing a corner of his backyard. <laughs> The house to the left has a big backyard and it's facing a corner to the backyard. The impact on the house, I think, is negligible, if, if any at all, with it pulled being shifted over two feet. Shifted back two feet. Shifted or back. Rear, like, You're right. I don't remember if it pulled, even pushed away. Yeah, I, I it, agree. It really, the, really the impact, if like, any, would be just marginal. And right. I think there'd be an impact. And I look at the... Uh, 
even though it's a, a, on the plane of the of the of the ground, and I say a corner of a house, just feels too it's too tight. Right. It's it's common. It feels like common sense when you look at it. Right. It just that doesn't look right. Mr. Fieldston, what would you like to do? <laughs> well, I, I, I would appreciate more room from the house. This was, we were backing into this. Um, so we, we, we backed into taking a standard size pool area and, you know, trying to match the rear to the side. Um, uh, but we have the space in the back. I can move it. I, I, you know, I, I obviously can move it back. Um, three more feet would give me 10 feet from the house. It would alleviate some of the, the pressure uh, of, of how close it is walking around because, you know, the, you, you have to get from the driveway to the patio um, and we were going to have a pretty narrow walk there. So not one that would be unusable, but, um, you know, every foot matters back here. But you do want to leave enough space so that you can navigate around the pool. We do want you to keep the screening, which are the substantial arborvitaes that are there. You we must have three feet right now, at least from the property line, just to house the arborvitaes. You need some small buffer area around that, and you need to have the fence that's there, plus the retaining wall. So, you know, those things have to be figured out, and we need to know exactly, ultimately, what the measurement is going to be so you get the correct variance. You know, when you look at the distance of that 8.7, you have a big drain right in the middle of the walkway. Well, that drain has to be moved because that drain is to the existing Coltec system, which needs oh, okay. to be relocated. Not being proposed, that's to be relocated. Mm -hmm. Listen, yeah. I didn't eat yet. I don't know about you, but still. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. In reality, I'm never going to see this pool again in my lifetime. <laughs> so I think we should either. So do we? Right. Do we <laughs> we want to take a voice vote if we want to ask him to come back so that he can ask well, people. Look away. He's not going anywhere. He's starting. I, don't, I personally don't need to do that, but I'm just respecting the wishes of the other members mm -hmm. of the board. I'm only yeah. suggesting that. I don't know that I personally would do this without reviewing everything with the engineering to request exactly what is correct. I would look at the pool cover. I would look at how that's going to be mounted. I would look at all those things so your variance is correct. I mean, you don't want to be coming back to us because all of a sudden they figure out that you're nine inches off, you know? Unless you, unless you feel comfortable. Look, this is your call. If you feel comfortable with saying, I'd like to ask for two more feet and I'll make sure it works. Why can I answer a question? Why it wouldn't work? If you know, if, I'm if just saying the, the, the things that I'm suggesting. For, it's giving more space for the pool equipment. I don't understand that question, Jonathan. Well, does anyone else agree with Jonathan that they that they want that information? Well, yeah. Well, you didn't submit a pool set of drawings. You said all you submitted to us was the location of the pool. That's right. That's correct. <laughs> That's correct. Because a lot of piping. I don't know the depth of the pool. I don't know any of that stuff. That's All right. You're giving us the location of a pool to proceed further to get the plans developed. Exactly. Because it's, right. it's, it's a substantial cost to engage. And if you don't know what you're drawing. So if, if, we, if, I, if, if I poll the board, mm -hmm. and, it, and by polling it means we're not bound to it, but you get a good sense of where the board's coming from, Adjourn your meeting to next month so you can get those drawings prepared so we can see a little bit more of the detail of the pool. Okay. Um, and, and in terms of the detail of the pool, what, are, are you worried about the depth? Are you worried? I mean, it's well, when I do pool drawings, a section through the pool, what the pool profile looks like, of where's, the, where's the deep end, what is the depth? You know, those are things that you would want to present. And have, did you do the geotech already? Because you said you identified where there was rock. No, what I said was if I turn the pool the other way, I have rock formations that come out of the ground. I can see them visibly. No, because that could end up being another consideration. When you actually do your geotech and you go down, you may find you've got granite it, where you're having it by moving the pool by another foot, 
it would alleviate having to remove a substantial amount of rock. Well, you have to do a lot of borings. For you that. have to do your borings. You have to do your borings to find out what you a got. A lot of borings. <laughs> right. So this area here above the retaining wall, uh, when the house was built, that retaining wall was 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 built, and there was that's all fill back there. That's rock fill that brought that backyard up to that level. Yeah, but that's only three feet down. Your depth below but, that. That's right. So so we need to get past the fill and then and then do some depth analysis. Um, so so I, can analyze, I can analyze that for you. It's all rock. It <laughs> is rock. It is. We all we all know it's rock. Any of us who have built here know there it's rock. The only difference from, from no from charge. Rock. No, it's it's the only difference is how deep is the pool going to be. It's, it's, it's but rock. it's rock whether it's a 12 foot or a, or a whatever variance, right? Right. It depends on the type of rock and, you know, that, the kind, you know. So. That's it's all on the ground. It's hard. <laughs> Weigh in on that as well. Okay. That's what I'm trying to understand um, what Mr. Wexler is looking for. And I want to help the board as much as I can. But what I'm seeking is to understand how big this pool can be and in what location it can be from the backyard and off the house and off the side, and then utilize that information to then turn and have a, an engagement with a pool contractor who can then give me an accurate set of plans and the like that I can then submit to the town for approval and go through all, but I can't. Correct, I, correct, I, correct. Yeah. Correct. It's just that it's just that in the building process, normally you got a little bit of the tail wagging the dog. Um, before I ever get in the ground or go out to seek what I'm looking for for positioning a building, I always go out to make sure I understand the geotech because I may make a decision to move where I physically have the building because I've got substantial rock in a place. Yeah, I, you may find out that moving this two feet over in the end is where you need to be because you'll eliminate a substantial amount of rock removal. How right. is he going to know so, that? You know how many borings you have to do to, to do that? Yeah, that's going to be a oh, lot of borings. I'm gonna, I'll figure that. I'm gonna have to figure that out. But I did consult with the um, the builder of this house, and and um, who is going, who who is going to help me with the moving of the retaining wall and the excavation because he is the one who put it in, so he understands the topography here. Um, and in his assessment, without doing borings, this would be the best location on the entire property as you go towards Murdoch you get much more substantial rock formations that, that come out of the ground. This area is, um, while there's no doubt that there is, there is rock underneath, we can, if the pool is gonna be, let's say seven feet, seven and a half feet, and we're four feet up already, we're, we're, we're substantially lowering our costs of chipping away at the, at the rock underneath versus going somewhere else on the property. So you don't if you don't need to convince us. We're just giving you a little bit of our own experience. Oh, I, agree. I, agree. I very much appreciate if you're, it. Again, I'll go back to saying, if yeah. you are comfortable for asking for the variance right now and want to say you'd like to move it two more feet, it sounds like this board is willing to give you that variance. It's just that you don't want to end up finding out in the end that that variance wasn't adequate because of the whatever only thing that will happen. So can I ask Jonathan, this, Jonathan? Excuse me, Jonathan is that he's digging for the pool and he's hitting rock, and he's going to bring it closer to the house, maybe or somewhere else, and it'll come back for okay. a variance on very good grounds that there's hard rock in the ground. Right, we're and not at that point yet. He wants to know where to. Talk. If he, maybe, needs, yes, if he maybe. needs less of a variance, does he have to come back? No, we need more of a variance on the other side. Right. So, so what I would I'm, ask I'm, I'm, I'm stepping out of this meeting because I, yeah. my wife is screaming. I think we should me. vote. <laughs> I think we should vote. Can, can, can I ask one? Can I ask can one? I take, can I take a straw vote? To keep this guy? Yeah. Let him do what he wants to do. I want to get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> I vote. Let him do the greater variance. I would go along with that as well. Me too. Sounds good. I don't have a problem. Good. All right. So I'm going to adjourn the meeting. Now you know where you're coming from. We're well, coming from. Wait, you're wait. adjourning? I thought we all just voted to give him the variance. No. If no, no, the variance, we you'd have to amend. We have to first get an amendment to the application. I thought we can do an oral amendment. Do I have to re-notice? Yes. No, no, no. We're just, you got to state what you want. I'm, wait, I'm but okay. Lit, can I, hold on. <laughs> Lisa, could you give us an opinion? Well, so, um, Rich, would you need to issue a new notice of disapproval if he's seeking a greater variance? 
And yeah. the, and I don't think you need to re-notice in any event. We don't need to re-notice. I would just have to. We would just have to amend the disapproval. So. Oh, okay. You wouldn't have to do that. It would stay. It's staying in the office. It's go, you know going into the zoning. It's not like it's getting sent out to the public. Right. So. I mean, so he can't do it right now. He would have to do it next month. Well, I just want to oh. put this out there. Can 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 the approval? If if is that the only thing that has to happen? Amending the notice of disapproval because that can be a condition subsequent. Yeah. So I don't I don't have a problem. You know, Richie's right here. We know what he's going to do. So and then, and then I get a set of you know a set of plans that match what we're. Right, that's what I, I would I would do. Yeah, I don't see. I can't see a reason to put this over a month just for that and i would appreciate that because we're pushing into the winter months and it's going to start to be impossible to do any type of it, it doesn't seem like there's a Where there's rock you can take remove it any time of the year before the new oh, rock removal order no, comes in place <laughs> much as i love They're getting passed right now much as i love this back anywhere. and forth better or worse much as i love this back and forth i don't know that there's a need to engage in it yet again next month if we don't need to and we're all on the same page and lisa tells us legally we don't have to i think we should just do it now i appreciate that can i ask if if the if the board would be amenable to um, granting a little flexibility on the on the on the condition that the pool size stay the same. So if the total footprint with the coping plus the pool is forty feet, that um, uh, if I find that instead of being twelve feet from the neighbor's property, I need to be thirteen feet because I encounter rock, that I have some flexibility against the house to move so that I don't have to come back and and you use the committee's time or the board's time here to get one foot. Is that is that possible? No, no I, th I think we wanna know if, if we're putting in an, a condition subsequent for an amended notice of disapproval, I think we, it's one thing to say we don't need to have it amended before the board takes action. It's another thing to say that that number will be left open, like I think I think Rich and the board need to know tonight what what's going to be in that notice of disapproval. Yeah, I guess what all I was saying was if the suggestion um, earlier from Mr. Marsh was that the that instead of being 15 feet, perhaps we should be 12 feet, creating 10 feet from the house. If I were granted the ability to go 12 feet from the side, the backyard line, but instead of tightly prescribing 10 feet. From the house, we say it's nine feet or eight eight feet from the house, so that there is some wiggle room. Well, I guess we can do that if you agree. I to only build a twenty by forty foot pool with coping. Right. We can grant you the eight point seven feet from the house and twelve feet from the rear, and that gives you a little bit of flexibility to move in there because. We're saying that That's in any saying. event you're going to do this, you're either going to meet 8.7, or if they don't meet 8.7, it'll be nine feet, which is less than what was granted. That, that's what I'm suggesting. And then that would save the, the, the board's time in the future. But you have to agree that it's a 20 by 40 foot. So we'll put it's in much the it's it's exactly right. This shows a, a 40 by 22 foot wide pool, but um, that, that gets. No, 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 hold, hold, hold. Your drawing says a 22 by 40 with the coping. 22. No, it says 20 by 20 by 38 feet. That's the interior swimming area. So that means you need to so it's 22 by no. 40. With the outside coping. No, the coping, is, don't you measure the coping to the inside of the pool? You know, you're making the coping, you're 15 feet is to the outside of the coping. You're giving me a, a dimension on your drawing, the 38 feet to the inside of the coping. What is it? That's correct. That, that's how my, my um, <laughs> the engineer told me that's how you're supposed to draw it. The, the law is that the coping must, that the side yard must be 15 feet from the coping. Now, if we're well, misinterpreting- What side of the coping? The outside face of the coping. Well, I- <laughs> what we've done in the past, it's always been to the outside face of the coping. 
So the out, so if it's the outside face of the coping, right, that would be where the 15 foot is, then there's one foot of coping and then the pool. Isn't that right? You have a 38 foot water dimension on your pool. That's right. That way, that's what you're proposing. It, that, that's what it's shown there. And then one foot on either side makes it 40 that feet. That makes 40 feet. feet. That makes 40 feet, <laughs> including the coping, correct? Correct. And this and is showing- width is 20 feet and it's 22 feet with the coping. That's what it shows, yes. So that's it, right? That's right. Okay, so, so before, before you get to findings, I, I just need the clarity on, on what what you guys would be approving, uh, what, the uh, of what the notice of disapproval would be amended to say. Notice of disapproval will be, meant, will be that uh, the 15 feet will be 12 feet from the rear property line. All right, hang on. So from the rear property line, okay, so it's currently 15 feet, you're saying 12. 12 feet. The Distance to the corner of the the outermost corner, the innermost corner, outside corner, to be eight point seven feet from the house minimum. And which corner of that again? The lower right hand corner. Garage. When you say point seven feet to the coping. <laughs> to, to, to any the structure of the house. From from the coping. Eight point seven feet. And the pool shall not be any greater, including the coping of being of a shape of 22 feet wide by 40 foot in length, including the coping. Is that correct? Correct. So we're giving we're giving we're granting him a variance that he can shift that pool two feet in either direction still will meet the requirements of feet. no less than what we're granting in distance. Well, it sounds like what you're saying is three feet up, but in any event, if you had to come back a little. Right, three feet up. And then if I had to come, but you're, you're not, what I had asked for was seven, seven from the house. And you're saying that even if I shift it, if I'm unable to shift it by three feet. One minute, one minute, one minute. Yeah. You, you have seven, seven, but you're drawing seven, 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 so the inside face of the coping. So that would be the seven, seven would be. Seven, um, seven is what I'd be looking for. Exactly. I mean, seven the, is, the, the matching is a little crazy on the pool. Let me tell you that. So the, it's, it's written now that the pool as proposed will be 7.7 .7 feet from the principal correct. structure. So that's staying the same. The only thing that's changing is that where he's asking now for the rear yard setback will be 15 feet. It'll be 12 feet. 12 feet, okay. Okay. And you're but, 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 the but, but we're setting the size of the pool to be what's on the drawing. Exactly. Yes, so we I'm can't not, make the pool 40 foot. I don't know. 40, I, mean, I think feet. we're gonna <laughs> jump in through hoops here. Arthur, I appreciate what you're trying to do, but really the goal is to get this pool further away from the house. So by granting the variance for 12 feet to the rear lot line, I would say give them the 12 feet to the rear lot line and get it. Don't be- no, no, no. What, I was, what I was trying to do is the part of the- yeah, You're trying to give them some tolerance to come dig, back. If he starts to dig and there's a, and there's a shift up in, in the rock- There is going to be a shift up in the rock. There is rock under this pool and these guys are not working to the six, six inches. They're going to have to hammer it all out of there. Uh, so you're going to hammer it out in the back left corner. You're going to hammer it out of the back right corner. You're not working with precision tools here. You're banging. No, right, right. The, well, let's let's assume out. that they, they built the house. They dug out a lot of it. They huh. filled a lot in the back. That's the right. Homes, and we don't know where the rock is. It's just giving a little ability to not have to come back to us if he wants to shift it a foot or two. I would appreciate that. That 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 would be helpful. You can't move it any closer to your neighbor on the left, but you can push it a little towards the back. That's right. All right. Does anyone have a motion? It's five to ten. Mm. Yeah, I didn't eat dinner yet. Did you eat dinner? No. <laughs> <laughs>
So are you actually, am yeah. I actually, would I be receiving the variance with this motion or are you asking? Oh, we're going to vote on it. You'll soon know that. You're going to get a variance. You're going to get a little bit of tolerance. You're going to get uh, you everything. You, you get everything. <laughs> you're, That's not speed. <laughs> you're last. Okay. I like to make a close, I like to make a close, no, I can't close. Right, we're making a motion. Close right. the public hearing. You didn't, uh, you didn't ask the public, public if they had any comments. We should ask for the public. Are there any comments from the from, from the public? Public is non-existent in our attendance. They're all sleeping. <laughs> I, I received no emails uh, from anyone. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Second. Would someone like to make a motion on this? I found my cheetah sheet. I would do it, but I don't, I don't seem to have it here. I didn't right. mind without okay. it, Arthur. I'll give it a shot. <laughs> it's in my office. I didn't it. It's <laughs> Uh, with regards to application 3191 Ross, uh, Ross Fieldston to construct a pool on the premises located one split tree road, section three, block five, parcel 1010, disapproved on the following grounds. Uh, the proposed, the pool as proposed will have the, um, Ability to <clears throat> oh, get just give me the setbacks. Seven point seven feet to the coping from the house, uh, from as a minimum, right? The minimum, the closest it can be to the house is seven point seven feet. the ha The pool shall be no greater than twenty two by forty in length, including the coping, including the coping. The rear yard setback will be no closer than 12 feet to the um, rear property line. to the rear property line, including the coping. No, 12 feet from the cope from the outside point to the coping line. The outside of the coping. I don't know if I read that properly. Lisa, does that make sense? I think I got it, Steve, and I will, um, I'm going to send it to it. you after I draft it All to right. make sure I got it right. We're going to make sure we have those dimensions right. <laughs> um, let's see. The board, uh, so it was originally denied because it was too close to the house, too close to the rear property line. We're asking that the applicant push it uh, closer to the rear property line and step have the opportunity to push it a little bit further away from the house. The board finds that the benefit to the applicant from the granting of the variance outweighs any detriment to the health, safety, and welfare of the neighborhood or community. In reaching this conclusion, the board considered the following factors, whether an undesirable change will be produced in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to nearby properties will be created. The board um, did not think this variance would uh, change the character of the neighborhood. It's uh, allowing uh, a... Um, well, there's a lot of other pools in the area. There's significant distance from the other houses. There's a lot of pools in the areas. There's a, uh, this property owner is uh, kind of like on a corner yard street, right? So um, he has a large front yard, which is uh, burden by the look, burden. And he has managed to put uh, frame this pool in the back left corner of the property while still allowing um, some green space for the family to make use of the rear yard. Uh, the board finds that by uh, ex pushing the pool further back into the left corner into the back yard to 12 feet off the property line we're allowing for more um, of a comfortable path between the house and a larger separation between the house and the pool this has no immediate impact on the uh, left neighbor at i believe three split tree and really um because we're not even asking for a variance against three split tree and three Murdoch. Uh, we are pushed the house, the pool further away from the, the house structure of three Murdoch Road, right? Um, 
whether an applicant can achieve their goal via a reasonable alternative. The applicant has presented a number of different uh, alternatives that did not work. They brought the pool closer to the rock outcroppings over on Murdoch. They showed uh, an unusable um, size pool or impractical size pool that would meet all the required setbacks, but would not be uh, prudent to build. So this is um, a pretty good alternative. Uh, the variance the board finds is not substantial. Um, we're, we're allowing this to get as close as 7.7 um, .7 feet to the house, hopefully closer to 11 uh, feet off the house. And the um, taking into some other municipalities uh, consideration, there doesn't appear to be uh, a reason why that uh, eight to 11 feet is uh, too restrictive. Um, let's see why the variance is substantial. The rear lot line uh, setback at 12 feet from what is required of 20 feet uh, also is not a um, substantial variance because it is at a joining point of three backyards, four backyards. We have a lot of space behind that corner of property. Whether the variance will have an adverse impact on the physical or environmental conditions in the neighborhood, the board finds it will not have a um, physical or environmental impact. The uh, does the pool, Rich, is the pool considered um, Im impervious surface? Or yes. It's going to have no more runoff than whether it would have been in the required setbacks. Right. There'd be no additional, additional runoff. runoff. It doesn't create more runoff just because it's outside the setbacks, right? Right. More county is considered impervious. Uh, whether there has been... Uh, <clears throat> whether the variance has been self-created. It appears that it has been, but it's non-determinative in this matter. Steve, could I suggest two things? Please. Um, number one is all of the other alternatives actually brought the pool closer to the structure that was affected by this variance. And each of those alternatives would end to not his structure, to the neighboring structure. So anything you move there, and that this is the furthest point away from the property line that is affected by this variance and the furthest point away from the actual structure of the neighbor that sure. will be affected by that variance. Thank you. Anything else? Any other, uh, I want to add anything else into this one? Uh, for the reasons stated above, the granting of the variance uh, is in harmony with the general purpose and intent of the town of Mamarna. Good. Roll. Yes. Roll call. Offer you a second? Yeah. I'll second it. Vote. Offer? Yes. Irene? Yes. Stephen? Yes. Robin? Yes. Jonathan? Aye. Great. All right, so you got a pool. It's got to be 12 oh, no, feet off the pool. Line. Line. <laughs> Quite a bit of rock to go, but yeah. uh, good luck with the rock. Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate all the rock. That sounds like a title to something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, should we adjust the minutes quickly? Thank you. Yeah, I had I had one um, comment on the minutes. On uh, page nine, on. Um, which one is this? This is uh, 40 Cooper. The On the first finding, um, the last sentence says, the existing architecture and surrounding properties and set back behind the garage. I don't know if you want to just clarify that. It's set back from the line of where the garage, you know, I don't know what the right wording is, but it's not behind the garage. It's behind the line of where the garage comes out to. 
follow me? You're muted, Lisa. Playing of the garage. Lost them. Um, from where the garage extends to the out into the property. Correct. The garage comes out here. You know, it doesn't where the portico's going is behind the line, but it. It's, it's not behind, behind the, the plane garage. of the garage. The plane, okay. some other word has to go in there because it's not behind the garage. Okay. I don't, I don't care what, um, but I would, back. I would make a motion to approve with that one. Second. Um, second. Okay. I have the gist of what you're saying. I'll, I'll, I'll send Francine some new language. Um, and then I have one point. Oh, do we want to vote on it? Yeah. We did. Okay. Um, I just have one point of order. Uh, 15 Martin Road. Uh, this has been an open file that dates back to uh, six months. They were heard of the denial was based on March 3rd. The original application was back in February. This person has not appeared for, I forget what we said. I thought it was five subsequent um, meetings and then we would disapprove through motion. Uh, they would have to reapply. Do we have to take a vote? Oh, hold on. When was our last? When was our last? We, we skipped some Zoom some meetings. Our last meeting was in February before COVID. So you're saying so the, 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 one, the one that's on Blossom Terrace was, was the same was from February. That's even further back. Yeah, that's true. Blossom Blossom's appeared. This one has not appeared on Martin. Or has I it appeared yet? We haven't yet? had meetings every month since then. Yeah, I think I think Jonathan, in this case, without knowing if there's extenuating circumstances, I think we shouldn't just dismiss it. I think, Hard. especially given the fact that there were not meetings in March, April, or May, that we should make an inquiry before we dismiss okay, it. So I, then, I, finally, I would suggest that the board direct the building inspector to uh, examine the file and report back at the next meeting. Gotcha. I actually wrote it down on my list already after you mentioned it earlier, and I'm going to give them a call. I'll reach out to them. Okay. Um, but what did we resolve about that, about how many subsequent meetings? I have to look back at my notes. I, I think it was two or three. It wasn't five. It was I mean, three. Three. I just say it's a long time. We've had at least three meetings since, yeah. uh, <laughs> since then. I, I have to go back and check. I don't remember what. I'm going to say good night. <laughs> good night. <laughs> When's our next meeting, may I ask? Enjoy your dinner. Well, uh, I don't know if, if she's up anymore. In October. I smell something back there. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> it's in October, Arthur. Good night, everyone. Thank you. October, what, the 4th? Uh, do we know, Francine? October 28th. 28th. Well, guys. Yeah. Night. The 28th? Yep. Have as much of the yes, whatever warm weather we have, 